what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We you at, Steve Kim? Got trend to cut. Yeah, yeah. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? In the gym, shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to I love talking talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that that are like minded and and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. You are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his flowers. What is up? What is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. I gotta get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and back it. Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. With the gas, Smitty and Jason Brown. What up, what up, what up? Just another kid from Bompton right in the building. We're here live 6 to 9 a.m. every day right here on the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. We got a loaded lineup today. We got Big Matt McChesney, Keenan Middleton, of course, our St. Louis pitchers, uh, Cardinals pitcher, every Wednesday on Work Boot Wednesday, as it is Work Boot Wednesday. And we got a special guest, Carolina Panthers beat writer, journalist, Sheena Quick. Some of you have seen her on the Pat McAfee show. Let's get it going. It is uh, Work Boot Wednesday right here on the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. As we need you to become a member today, subscribe, become a member of our Discord Slap Nation. Download the Discord app and find Slap Nation. We also, uh, we're going to have a hell of a show today. Like I said, Keenan Middleton, Cardinals pitcher, uh, as usual, every single Wednesday. So make sure you guys tune in if you're Major League Baseball fans or pitcher or baseball fans in general, Cardinals fans, the Doyer fans, Dodgers, Cardinals open up sh in a few short few weeks. We're going to dive into that. Big Matt McChesney joins us to kick around some tires on the realest show on planet Earth. Also, Carolina beat writer Sheena Quick joins us to give us the latest in Carolina. Uh, with Bryce Young, the addition of Deontay Johnson from Pittsburgh. We're going to dive into that as well. But first in the news is Aaron Rodgers once again trying to headline the offseason with some crazy talk that he could retire and become Kennedy's running buddy for vice president of the United States of America. <laughs> uh Anyway, Nick Saban talked with Senator Cruz about NIL and why he got out, which I have been saying for two years now. Let's begin, though, in football in the NFL with Derrick Henry. Signing with the Ravens, a two-year deal worth about $8 million per. Uh, Joe Mixon to the Texans and Moss to the Bengals in a running back carousel that it seems to be this free agent season. Jameis Winston to the Cleveland Browns to back up we think, Deshaun Watson. Commanders add Mariota, as we mentioned yesterday, and Mooney, the wide receiver, to the Falcons to go along with Kirk Cousins. Plus, T. Higgins requested a trade just shortly after being tagged uh, in Cincinnati. We're going to dive into that. And what will Denver and New England do at quarterback is my question to Smitty. Plus, Deontay Johnson has just mentioned to the Panthers, as ESPN would write yesterday, he is a great player a leader, a great teammate, then that gets the comment section buzzing with positive vibes in the casual fan base section. So as that being said, they avoid the fact that addition by subtraction is a real thing, and Pittsburgh just got a lot better by getting rid of this shitbird. We're going to dive into it, but before we begin... My wonderful co-host, Ball State legend, Naptown's finest, 317, Far East Side, great, 
an AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving, and LeBron hairline having Fox Sports very own, our main man. Welcome him in, Big Smitty. Clap it up. <laughs> Smitty, what's going on, man? What's going on? First of all, educate me and educate the viewers on what exactly is a uh, Bompton? I'm uh I'm 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 not from the hood, JB. I'm I'm from uh a different type of area that's uh we didn't have the information that you have. So. What you said. You said what? Educate you on what? You said uh, you started the show. You said just another kid from Bompton. Can you explain what that is exactly? I did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. We, I'm allergic to the words, the letter C. All right, so I got to move on. We have... Um, <laughs> I say that. Uh, we got a lot going on, Smitty. Welcome What's in. What's going on, y'all? I didn't know you were uh, in the show today. I thought you were taking the day off because I usually carry the show all the time, and it feels like I've been... Carrying it lately, so I didn't I'm know. Not if gonna lie, I almost overslept today, JB. My last alarm went off, so I, I, I do, do almost oversleep. There's no such thing as almost oversleep. Well, my, my 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 last alarm went off. I saw it. I was like, all right, let me go ahead and get up. I about to get up, say my say my prayer, brush my teeth. Woo, woo. For some reason, I turned it off, and my body immediately went back to sleep. Like as soon as I pressed stop, I just fell asleep. So thank God, I woke up. It said it said five forty nine. I'm like, oh shit. So you know, you know, you know that feeling you get as a, a player when you're almost about to be late, and you jump the fuck up and you get moving. That's what I had. So like the good thing about that feeling, it instantly wakes you up. Like I as soon as I saw what time it was, I jumped up, no longer tired, got up, had my business, and now we're here and I'm ready to go. Uh, um Keith Smith said, JV, I'm sure you've overslept an alarm once or twice. First of all, I don't use an alarm, Keith. You're not built like me. It, don't let an alarm be the only reason you wake up, Keith. If you woke up without an alarm for another reason, like maybe having some admiration the night before as you lay down and say, oh, tomorrow I got to go do this, I got to go do this. In Keith's case, this is what you should do, Keith. When you lay your fat head down at night, you should sit there and say, all right, tomorrow I got to get up and do a thousand push-ups to get rid of these fucking titties. That's number one. That should motivate you to get up. You don't need an alarm to wake up if you have motivation and a, and, and a goal in mind, Keith. So if you go to bed with a goal in mind, it's like I used to go to bed, Smitty. Like, I don't need no fucking alarm. At 3 in the morning, I get up because I got to get to the office by 4, and I got to fucking get recruiting manuscripts done. I got to get a calendar ready for the off season. I got to get the weight room ready. See, that's the difference. You cats need an alarm to wake up? What? First of all, JB, my man said a thousand push-ups. Just first and foremost, make sure that didn't go over your head, y'all. Thousand push-ups, number one. Well, number two, you JB, you mean tell me that you don't have no alarm, like, like just on some emergency shit? You stay up, you stay up till one, two in the morning. How the hell does your body automatically wake, wake up at five? Dog, it's this program don't now, make sense. Right now. I got a text at three this morning, and I respond. You can ask anybody that knows me. I mean, this ain't no. I don't got a calf like y'all say. Like people hit me up all the time, like. How the fuck on the East Coast? They're like, I, I knew your motherfucking ass would respond. And it's no, there's like, been a time where, I, where I've been up late and I hit you up, and I'm just doing it just to, you know, assuming you're going to hit me back the next day and you'll respond right there. I'm like, damn, JB. I, I think you got sleep apnea. You got nah, like a fucking issue, I think. It means you fall asleep during the day. Right. Or, you got the opposite. You got you got apnea sleep. You got the other I, shit. I, I got no sleep at all. I don't sleep. <laughs> all, I don't like sleep. All, all, one, all one word. I tell everybody, dog, like, it's right, D. Jones. Alarms are soft. Smitty. Uh, Smitty loves saying everything soft. Like, I, alarms are soft. Fuck alarms. <laughs> I, I don't sleep, though. I, sleep is where when you die, period. I think. That's what I think. Like, yeah. Smitty, I got two I got two things, Smitty. I'm going to die broke. I want to get rid of every dime, and I don't want nobody to have it. So I'm going to spend all of it on myself, number one. Number two. I don't want you. I don't need sleep. I want to die tired. <laughs> I want to die tired, so I sleep forever. <laughs> Fuck all that. I'm gonna grind and get the most out of this goddamn earth that I can. And wasting eight hours doing nothing is a fucking ignorant concept. Let's keep it one hundred. 
I'm on most pieces. I heard what you said. He's sitting over there thinking like, fuck, it does make sense and shit, but I don't know. He said I'm wasting eight hours. Like, I hear what you're saying, but the body literally I, needs I was sleep. ready for that grind. <laughs> I don't sleep for I don't sleep for eight hours. I sleep for like four. I get four to five hours a night. That's not that's not that's not a lot. It's just enough to get my body, you know, enough. Hey, to I'm not the only sleep. person, and I'm not. I don't consider myself like uber successful or anything. I'm not the only person that thinks that way. That is successful, though. Well, you, I don't do eight hours of sleep, but the rich people they sleep though for a couple hours. Like you get a couple you, hours. Have you, talked, have you ever read uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's book or his movie? He'll tell you about eight hours. I used to use it in JUCO as a coach years ago. This was back in the day. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a JUCO product, by the way. FYI to everybody out there that did not know that. So better than me. So he uh he would talk about sleep and shit. He was like eight hours. He was like oh, fuck. He goes four to five is almost too much for me. He goes. I want to get a jump start on my competitors. I want to get a jump start on cats, and I want to beat them. That's a real thing, though. People could talk about all that shit that you want, but there's a real thing involved. Like, there is 1440. There is a real thing involved in time that you can get a jump start on while you're sleeping. Like, you won't even make your bed, Smitty, a little less. I know you're ass sleeping as much as you can. Shit. Nah, I mean, I mean, listen, four hours of sleep, man. Like that, that's pretty bad. Like the, the doctors and shit would be like, they tell you, darn it, you need more sleep. That's why you're this and the third. Like they say, your body heals when you're fucking sleep. There's a lot of positive effects when you're sleeping that you're probably missing out on. You probably are not fully as tall as you're supposed to be, JB, because you ain't been sleeping your whole life. You supposed you supposed to be like six seven. You know you grow when you sleep. That's why your shit probably small because like you you just be up all night. You just up. You don't get no rest. Nothing can grow. You got small feet, small hands. You're just up all night. That's part of the issue. So I hear you. You don't need eight hours, but you do need to put some gas into the in the tank. That's like driving your car all fucking just forever and never putting gas in it. It makes no sense. You got everybody put know I got the mind. biggest hands on the show, meaning we know what that means. Oh Come my on. god! As soon as I put my motherfucker, it just like look. Come on, dog. It's not even close. We've already done this measurement, Smitty. Tell the truth. Who's got bigger hands? It's Tell the everybody. girth. It's the girth on my eyes. Up. Yours is slightly. Look slightly right here. But women care about the girth in the hands. My hands, hands bigger right than here. yours, fatter than yours, bigger than yours. It's, it's bigger girth. than yours. It was cold uh, that night. We got a lot going on today. We got uh, we got to dive into it. But first and foremost, let's get to the quote of the day. Brought to you by BetOnline.ag. Head on. What up, what up, what up, man? The real Coach JB here for the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course. For the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today, become part of the team, and remember to use promo code Believe B L E A V for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. All right, let's get into brass tax quote of the day, Smitty. You never know the truth. You know a truth. <laughs> Ooh, so you know uh, a piece of it, not the full thing. Okay. Yeah, everyone talks about. I, I, I'm a truth teller. I know the truth. You know a truth, motherfucker. You don't know the truth. Uh, contrary to belief, brought to you by Prize Picks. Um. Pain forces even the innocent to lie, contrary to yeah. belief. Um, pain forces the innocent to lie. I've, I've, I've known people that have sacrificed their damn selves or someone that's close to by lying when they really didn't even do the thing to take the bullet for the person. You know how what I'm talking about? Yeah. In the hood, you grow up doing that. Um, I don't think we live in that. I don't think people do that at all. I think if you told somebody to do that or raise somebody to do that, they would look at you crazy. Like, mother, I got a TikTok video to do. I ain't lying. Um, <sighs> unbelievable. Poll question, Smitty. Here we go. Ah, oh, sure. He got that look in his eye. Nah, that's an easy one. Uh, who had, drop your comments in the section below, who has had the best offseason in the NFL so far? We're going to dive into it. We're going to grade that out later on. Um, we're going to get into it. Um, 
Somebody said he's headed over to ESPN because he wants to hear sports. <laughs> Bye, bitch. Peace. Like, what the fuck? You? Oh, shit, Smitty. Let's start talking about sports right now. Ah! One fucking non-member subscriber wants to leave. Get the fuck out of here. Who said fuck. it, man? Let's let's roast his ass for two minutes. I, I don't know like. who did it. It's up there somewhere. I saw it. Um, he ain't got no picture see. probably. Let's see what we got going on here. We got a thousand in here in 15 minutes. I know that. Shout out to Twitter. Really? Yeah. Shout out to Twitter. JB Matt says, oh, shit. I can't check. Oh, I can't check my text, though. I'm on fucking TikTok. But I, but I, but I see it, though. I see what it said. It's all good. Hey, keep it pushing. Keep it moving. Keep it doing this thing. I was going to announce it later on. So, um, so everybody can still. Yep. That's hey, smart. TikTok, what up? Pound that like. We're on the business. Let's get this thing on. The, let's get this thing going, Smitty. Uh, there's a loaded show today. Aaron Rodgers, um, once again making huge wild news. But I got huge wild news for you, mm. and that is, say it. I want Smitty to say so. <laughs> we got to get Smitty say so a little bit on the record here. Smitty said so. Let's get it going. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you for that amazing transition, man. Listen, y'all. Nobody gives a fuck. That's one of the greatest lessons I've learned while playing college football was that nobody truly cares about you. No matter how great you are or how bad you are in life, it doesn't matter. Now, they might judge you briefly in the moment. But within five minutes, they're on to something different. So my message to you is get out of your own head and just focus on living your best life possible. Don't let the fear of what others may think about you hinder you from becoming the best version of yourself. Life is way too short. Don't play with it. Maximize this thing and drain out all of the toothpaste out of the tube. Pause. And if you think I'm wrong about this, then guess what? I don't really care because everything I say is a fact because Smitty said so. Bring JB back on right now, man. Quick quick and easy, man. Smooth. What you think, JB? Was, was I keeping it real, man, or what? I thought you were going to say, from what I've learned on this show. Oh. <laughs> Shout out to David Philly, man, my amazing strength coach, for just pouring that into our, into our minds our entire college career, man, keeping it real. The realest thing I've heard, nobody gives a fuck. And that's so real, man. Now that I'm a I'm an adult and I look back, that's so true. And it sounds it sounds harsh, but it's just it's just the reality. Like nobody truly gives a fuck about what you got Hold going on. on. They got going on. I thought you want I thought you wanted a female strength coach. <laughs> I thought you had a female strength coach, homie. Leave these women alone. Leave these women alone. Hey. I feel confident that hey. Jada Benz could work me out good. Ba- baby girl NYC oh, could give me a baby oh, girl oh, give me an amazing workout. I think uh uh uh, uh Lucy Loose could put me through a yoga session. There's certain things that 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 these women can do that I think we are downgrading now, JB. Let's not let's let's give them their props, JB. I mean, I'm not saying that women can't do things. I'm saying they shouldn't do it. I'm just saying they shouldn't. <laughs> okay. That's that's clarity right there. That's a little bit because I think some of the women they thought you were saying that they can't do it, like they, they don't have the skills no, better no, to play it. Pause for you because I haven't heard one woman say that. Well, I've heard our men, mentions are differently. Are I've different. heard men say it. Our mentions are different. And then I was at you know I was at work. I one of the dudes at work was like he made a little joke. He's like I saw uh, he said Big Smee on the JB show while well, he's over there t- uh, talking about women can't coach her. <laughs> like you know you know somebody say like a joke but they're trying to be funny. I was like, listen, I, I defend like, the women. Like you and shit. Right, right, right. Trying to be funny, yeah. So I'm saying people are seeing it, people here. But you're right. This person was a man who, who did that, though. You are correct about that. So, um, All right, Smitty. So I'm, I'm glad you don't give a fuck. That's what you should do. Um, we, are, we already discussed my AD. <laughs> hey, I love Keith. I'm sorry. He's okay. my favorite person on the show. I don't give a fuck about what he's saying. Unbelievable. Because I don't know if that's really Keith. I, I He could be a, like just a straight troll, and that's not really his picture. But if you are Keith, don't never tell us. Always yes. be this yeah. person in this picture. Don't ever tell us, please. No doubt. 
All right, we're not going to talk about females in the workplace. We're going to talk about Aaron Rodgers uh, once again making huge, wild news that he could retire from football and become the VP of the United States of America. So, listen, he's running buddy would be obviously Kennedy. Um, the only thing is, Smitty, Kennedy isn't going to be the next fucking president of the United States. So that's why this is all just talk, mm. cap, talk, dro- whatever. Aaron Rodgers once a year has to make a splash news break and has to be the topic of discussion. And he's very calculated in doing so. This is it. So it was Hiwaska. It was fucking the Jets. It, every year, if you notice, something new. The shot a few years ago. It's every year something new. So him and Kyrie Irving, I think, compete for getting in the news the most with the most crazy shit. And I think this guy is now again, once again, putting it in the mood. It's like it's dumb. It's clickbait. He's not retiring after his Achilles. I don't believe if he does, this is a joke. And the guy he's going to run with isn't going to win the presidency, Smitty. Like, come on. I haven't even. I can't even talk either. Like, I like some of the shit he says, but he's got, like, a bad fucking, like, his vocal cords going out. Like, it seems like somebody just hit him in the fucking trachea or something. I don't know. So, the um, air order say he's going to retire and run. They say he might run. That's a difference. He might run while he's still run. playing. He might retire run while he's still playing. Run. You imagine the shit show America would be if this motherfucker was the quarterback for the Jets and the vice president of the United States? <laughs> They'll be like, our VP lost another NFC or AFC, excuse me, championship game. Hey, VP, what is it that you just can't make it to the big game? How can we trust you when things really <laughs> get rough for the country? <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, I don't know. You know, we just got, you know, we just got, uh, we just dropped uh, some food over at Hamas. What do you have to say about that corner route you missed uh, in the third quarter? <laughs> Jamie, look, they always lead with like a with like a real situation, but they ask a football question. Like, hey, uh, Aaron, we we just got sh- airstrike by you know so and so, and but speaking of airstrike, you failed to throw for three hundred passing yards last night. How does that feel? What was the thing? <laughs> oh man, it's like God damn. Aaron. But you know what, Jamie? We're laughing right now, but nothing would surprise me at this point. Hey, won it? It's a fucking joke. It's a mockery. I got. I, here's the thing about it, though. Like, Say it. if he really left, do you realize what that would do to the fucking Jets? You know what they gave up to get him? You know what they've done for him? Like, it, it would be a, a catastrophe in New York. But listen, I think we're just talking about drama and nonsense. I think he's got, like, I think Aaron's like, listen, I, lo- I love Aaron as a player. Uh, off the field, I'm not really keen on him i'm not keen on a lot of these guys but i don't judge them again like we talked about i didn't judge kobe bryant because you allegedly said he did something to somebody i only judge him on the fucking court i don't know kobe bryant i don't know aaron Rodgers. i met him i don't know him i don't know these people so i'm not gonna sit there and judge him i'm only gonna make assumptions on what we've seen in social media on tv by his actions etc I don't know him. He's a Northern California Juco product. His brother is as well. I've been around both of them. It is what it is. Butte, California, Chico. My uncle's from Chico. I've been up there. Chico State, he used to be coach at. AD. Like, listen, I got, it's all good. But he does some, says some weirdo ass shit. It is what it is. And everyone's weird as fuck. We could call Cam Newton another Juco product. Say it's weird shit. Everyone wants to go after him for different shit. So it, it, we all have some. They're going to say, I say weird shit. It is what it is. Um, but VP, we're a mockery. Like, we got guys that just, first of all, Trump had no political experience. He's the president of the fucking country. Aaron Rodgers has no political experience. And people would take him over Kamala Harris tomorrow. Because she's a woman. Not just because of everything. Like, they'll take him because he's a player. He's popular. He's a fucking quarterback. Like, think about it. They would take him tomorrow. That's why I told you to run because I think people, at least from a local standpoint, people will actually vote for you because of just you're popular. Like, that's where we at now, you know, as a society. We don't yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And it's like, fuck, you know, I, I, I got to look at the other. I don't want JB 
to run the country. I don't either. I'd be, it'd be fucked you know up. Like, it'd be Look. cool and funny. And all. I am not, no, because I will bomb everybody. I will bomb Putin and all, and Hamas, and all, everybody would go down. So you don't want and me. there's the YouTube channel. So you don't want me in there, Smitty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Are you in the mud the Like, all them cats will get... <laughs> JB, what JB doing? That motherfucker had an AE and she pissed them off. That motherfucker hit a bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> lit, lit up everybody. They had a bad day and shit coming in the office just pissed off in the board meeting with all, with all those people. They all, they all, ah, oh, shit, JB's pissed off again. You're not, you're not, you're not Netflix. A motherfucker be walking around eggshells in the White House, boy. Man, what the fuck? You slap dicks? Did I tell you to shit that shit over the grill? <laughs> Gotta do everything on my fucking own. Give me the button. The fucking fire. Give me the button. You can't watch that motherfucker as he walks to fucking his office. I, I, I checking for class grades, right? Like, yeah. you didn't watch motherfucking uh, that mother. You didn't walk Aaron Rodgers to the office. I gotta do everything around here, like all the GAs of the White House. I don't know what that give title would actually be. Give me the codes. Yeah, Smitty, give me the codes. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Matt and Weddle at? Right, right. <laughs> Steve Kim, call Kim Jong Young. Tell that motherfucker we're coming. <laughs> hey, you got, you have a big ass whiteboard drawn up like what the game plan is Hell and shit. Yeah. Motherfucker, yeah. all you gotta do is Hell take yeah. a plane, go fucking Iraq, <laughs> grab the fucking weapon from the forest, and blow this motherfucker up. Uh, yeah, shit, that's Throw gonna be up. a fucking meme right there. That's gonna be a fucking straight up goddamn meme. Shit. Ash wouldn't bite nobody. Ash would bite, like, you know, just the cats that come to visit, like Putin and Kim Jong Un. He'd bite them on GP. But other than that, he's just going to jump on you and loves women. Like, he's going to smell your titties. He, like, he loves women for some reason. It's crazy. He's going to uh, smell your titties out of all things. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, all right, Smith, so let's get into brass tacks. Nick Saban talks with Senator Cruz. Um, big Matt just hit us up. Let me just break news. To everybody out there, so you don't think something's up. Matt hit me up. I was like, man, I got I got court. He had a court case, a uh, court date and case that he that he had to get extended. So he extended it. What are you looking case? at me for like that, Smitty? Why you got a court case? What, what do you do? Uh, Matt will be on Friday. Because uh, people are going to assume, oh, Matt, do not want to come on no more? Not, he's fine. Um, Nick Saban. Talks with Senator Cruz about shit I've been saying on this show for two and a half years about NIL and why he got out of coaching after 50, I want to say 5 0, 50 years. Take a look. All listen. the things that I believed in for all these years, 50 years of coaching, no longer exist in college athletics. So it's always was about developing players. It was always about uh, helping people be more successful in life. Uh, my wife even said to me, we'd have all the recruits over on Sunday. Uh, with their parents for breakfast, and uh, she would always meet with the mothers and uh, talk about how she was going to help and uh, impact their um, sons and how they would be well taken care of. And she came to me, you know, like right before I retired and said, why, why are we doing this? And I said, what do you mean? She said, all they care about is how much you're going to pay them. They don't care about how you're going to develop them, which is all what we've always done. So why are we doing this? See, again, this is – and listen, we're beating a dead horse, and I'm not going to talk about it, but this is another yeah, reason. This is another reason, though, why I couldn't have a woman coach my son. Like, I need a grown man to to make my boy a grown man. And I'm just telling you, Smitty, this is opening up Pandora's box. I mean, keep it real. I mean, I, I'm going to beat a dead horse till it's dead and dead and dead. But the truth of the matter is we are doing this. So we can have what we're going to call equality and have women in there. I don't believe it's equality. I believe it's ruining and pushing out black coaches. I think it's ruining and pushing out the next generation of great coaches. And I don't think that a woman can raise and turn a boy into a man. I just don't. And I, a shout out to all the great, wonderful single mothers out there who raised three, four, five kids. I right. get it. <laughs> like, come on. Now. Now, but listen. I've, I've coached so many. I've recruited them my whole life. I've raised up in it. I've been around it my whole life. I haven't yet to see though, a, a boy go out and coach and play 
with a single mother and have that same mindset as a man, a boy that has a father in his life. It just doesn't exist. And I've had 200 a year, 200 a year for the last 20 years. I'm telling you, that's a hell of a statistic. I haven't seen a single mother raised home where she didn't personally ask me, JB, I need you to fucking turn my boy into a man because I can't do it. Single mothers are telling me this. Jermaine Johnson's mother told me this. Like, this isn't a joke. This isn't like a, a facade. This isn't like a game. Like, there's real shit out there like this needs to happen. Nick Saban gone opens up another uh, another soft crease to allow the Mike McDaniels of the world to roam our sidelines and our boys to continue to just take the easy route. Ah, uh, well, he yelled at me. I'm in the portal. Uh, I want more money because he, he uh, I'm telling you, this is what it is. If you don't see the shit stacking up, Smitty, it's going to be bad and sad. I'm telling you right now. I hear you. But number one, nobody forced Nick Saban to retire. He decides to retire because he didn't know how to, you know, correlate to the new rules and the, the new what's going on. Either he didn't know or he didn't want to. His decision. He's a legend, all time great coach at the college level. So he doesn't he can make those decisions. Number one. Number two, although that a lot a lot of what he's saying is true, you know, you're not able to develop a lot of these players because they leave so quick, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's not true for all players. There are still some players who will stay at one school because they love that school, and, and that's you know that's where they want to be. At. There's guys who will stay at a school for three, four years, and, and and still thug it out. So like, what about those guys? Are we only we only care about the 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 middle the the big name guys who who travel and and transfer? All you know, all the time. Like, what about the guys who do want to like stay still and, and be committed to their favorite program that you always watch growing up? It's like F them, number one. Number two, um, I don't know, man. I, I kind of take it, although I know there's a lot of issue with the NIL system, which we've already dove into. We we, we are in agreement. Saban has often came off as like, try, like what's the term? I'm trying to find the right term. Just someone who's just been against players getting paid like he may say that he's not but all his energy is is pointed in that direction and it's like huh i just wonder why when saving and all these other coaches has made millions of millions of dollars millions of dollars doing you know being a coach and at the same level off the backs of these players and as soon as the players start making money it's like a huge problem. Now I'm with you. The transfer portal, we've already talked about that. That that needs to change back to the old rule where you can transfer one time, and if you do, you got to sit out. And even when you do transfer, it has to be some sort of reason, like a family emergency, got to get closer to home, et cetera, et cetera. But players getting paid, man, it's about damn time. They should have been getting paid because without the players, there, there's no product. And really? these coaches and everybody else making – everybody else connected to is making money except the actual players themselves. So I just – Saban's been complaining about players making money the whole time. So I, I just get like a weird feeling whenever he talks about it. Well, first of all, none of the things you said I agree with. I don't agree with any of them. Number one, they did force him out because they forced him out when they told him he could no longer mold boys and turn them into men. That's number one. That is a force out. I'm who not told, going to, who told him that. The the rules told him that. Mm -hmm. The rules that have been developed and created told him that because of what he just mentioned, what I've been saying for years, what was going to turn into a joke and a mockery. This is what's happening. So that is who told him that. Number one, that's what forced him out. Number two, the coaches are not bankers. They're not analytical statisticians, statisticians. They're not accountants. Like the coach who's a grown man is now on the same level playing field as a kid is what you, Matt, everyone wants to bring up all the time. And it's just not the facts. It's not the truth. And it's not conducive for success of young people. If I were a young person and I was allowed to do whatever the fuck I wanted to do when I was 15, 17, 19, I would be dead in jail. Like, let's keep it real. So would you, Smitty. So would everyone we grew up with. So now all of a sudden, you imagine giving me six figures in Compton at 18 years old and telling me to go ahead and run with it and control my destiny when I don't even know how to control my destiny? Come on, man. We're speaking about ignorance, and ignorance is life-threatening. Like, I don't understand why these young folks, you young folks, don't grasp the concept of hierarchy. We wouldn't have won world wars. If the soldiers told the leaders 
how to attack fucking Germany. <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand how y'all are, are, are agreeing with it. Listen, I am, and so is Saban, for the players getting paid. There's a way to do it, though. And listen, if he wasn't, if he was against players getting paid like you so eloquently stated, let's be clear. Nick Saban paid more players than a fucking <laughs> unemployment. Just don't th- don't get it twisted. It's just a matter of how he did it, and that is the reason why it's gone haywire. If he didn't take care of his players, then you wouldn't have T. Rich on here talking about how great uh, he is and how he molded all those guys into men if he didn't take care of players. So that's a, a false statement in my opinion because just being around him and knowing him, I know for a fact everybody back in the day used to pay under the table. Ask Eric Dickerson in the 80s with the Pony Express. The matter of the fact is now it's public record. So you have two stars thinking they're worth five-star money, and that is why you have a watered-down product because everyone thinks they deserve the bag when really you don't. And that is why... There's transfers at an all-time high. That is why the collectives can't manage the money. That is why the NCAA washed their hands of it because they knew they could not control this dumpster fire. And now you have great legendary guys who created NFL legends gone, out of the business. And in two or three years, Smitty, your generation is going to be begging for those coaches to be back because you're going to see – how this turned into a shit show when we allowed player empowerment to control financials. And now you're going to say, oh, let's make them employees. Oh, I'm just telling you, dog. Listen, I'm all for the kids getting paid. I am not against them. And I've been saying this for years, but it should be based on your scholarship, not on name, image, and likeness. Because let's be real, Smitty. Tell me about name, image, and likeness. Let's break down the name, image, and likeness of what the actual acronym stands for. Name, image, and likeness, N-I-L. That means I need to sell my name, my image, and get likeness from selling jerseys, getting a car deal, auto car deal, whatever, a cell phone, T-Mobile deal, whatever. Name me how many of those have a name, image, and likeness deal in place. And then I will show you 90% of the rest of the kids who get paid $300 a month for nothing. And now we're going to sound like, oh, it's equal. No, it's not equal. You have guys up here getting six figures and everyone else looking at them as if they should get six figures. And guess what they do? Chase greener pastures. And that is why we have a watered down product. And I don't understand how people don't grasp this concept and understand this is simple economy. It's simply it's simple economic. Well, what's your name is just the real world, in my opinion. I mean, it is. ain't that what we all do? Like once you get once you're done playing sports and football ends because it will end, and you got to go work in the real world. You spend your you spend the majority of your life, especially in your young young life, trying to get to the highest level you possibly can within your profession the best job you could possibly can so you could take care of your family and your livelihood at the highest level. The goal was to always elevate, improve, make more money, leave the job, go to this next job, leave this position, go to the next position. Like in the real world, this is a regular day in the office. And in the real world, there is no fair. There, 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 there are classes. There is the wealthy and then the poor. And there's a huge gap in between. That's life. So Break that down to a locker room. Yeah, there's going to be players who are making $5 million. There's going to be players making $300. You're not that player. And I think it's important for these young players to learn that quickly because, again, that's a real-life, real-world lesson. So I don't see the issue. And, yeah, you might have some jealous players. Oh, he's making that much. I should be making that much. That's the real world, brother. So learn this at 18 because this is how it's going to be. You're not going to always uh, get what you think you deserve. And deserve is just a, just a loose word where hey, I, lo- I lost all connection. I don't know if you did. Well, I, you left for a second, but you came right back. Like on my uh, screen, my the sh- way it looked. My shit went away. I lost everything. You uh, blinked for a second, came back. But I, I've been here the whole time. But I, I guess what I'm saying you, is, brother. You, last thing you were saying was um, about. I'm going to say it's the real world. Like for me, like it's so 
I think it's it's cool that these young guys are learning how the economy works because when you're you spend your whole life trying to grow, trying to transfer to another company, transfer to another position in order to take care of your livelihood and, and take care of your business and your family, and it's never an, an equal situation within the company. You got the CEO making what they making, you got managers making what they making, and you got the bottom of the totem pole. I work at Fox Sports. It is not equal. <laughs> I walk around a lot of money in there that they make a lot more money than what I'm making and everything in between. So why not learn that at the college level? I do agree. Again, we're on the same page when it comes to there needs to be some sort of betterment of a system so it's not just as pay for play and you can go anywhere you want to. I, but I think, and we used to agree to this, we got to change the transfer rules. It's not the money. It's not the NIL for me. It's the transfer rules. If you can't transfer or if you do transfer, there's some sort of penalty. Now guys are sitting back thinking like, huh, is it really worth me leaving Alabama right now? Because I got to sit out of here. And then I don't know how this other spot's going to be. I can't I, – after that move, I can't move any, anymore. It's putting see, pressure on them. Right I, now – See, loose. my take on this – I know we're off topic here, but we always have real ad-lib conversation on the show. The problem I have is we're paying guys that aren't worth a, piss to, a pot to piss in. Yeah, I hear let's you. Be, let's be honest. We're paying dudes like <clears> – <throat> I don't know. Like I'm not. I'm not gonna name names, right? We're paying college players that don't deserve the dollar they're getting. Yeah. So yeah. when we really equate it and break it down, we got a bunch of guys who everyone wants to cry and bitch and moan about not getting enough money, but then we overpay a lot of these cats who don't give back half of what we've given them, either on the field towards our academic institution where we now a couple years ago smitty this was a huge thing oh we got to have our rpi up our gpa for a football playing team has to be this has to be that dog that's what happened to all that what happened to all the academic talk in college it's gone it's a joke this is amateur football and it is now what we know like we know that Semi-pro football in, 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 in the real world. In California, semi-pro really means you break your leg, homie. You're fucking out. Your ass out. This is the it's 40-year-olds who never could play that are trying to replay their, their dream. They're out here playing fucking semi-pro. It's the worst football in the world. There's no insurance. There's no pay. Nothing. This is what we have, though, with real players that can play. It's semi-pro. Their number one focus isn't class. It's not getting a degree. And either is the academic institution's number one priority to get their degree for them. It's to get money. It's to get a BCS bowl game, a TV contract, so I can get a new computer lab, math lab, science lab, which is built from football money, FYI. And this is what it's doing in a nutshell, Smitty. It is eliminating female sports. And no one wants to bring it up. And you wonder why there's more females moving and moving in the direction of coaching because I'm telling you right now, the college woman's sport is about to be dead. And let me break it down. Women's swimming, women's diving, women's probably, I would say, lacrosse. <sighs> Yeah, lacrosse. Um, I'm trying to think. Softball could stay because of the Olympics and 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 because of what I'm trying to think. What professional or soccer would stay probably because of Olympics. Tennis, ah, it's close because there's not enough bodies in college to, that play tennis um, for for Title Nine to kick in and dollar for dollar match. So there's a lot of sports out there like badminton and club sports. I can see cheer going away. Cheer is a club at most institutions. It's not an actual sport. Um, here's my point, though, and there's probably a lot of a lot of female sports. Title IX is gone. Title IX no longer can or will be able to protect the dollar-for-dollar dollar match. Dollar for man, dollar for woman. That's the rule. That's Title IX. I got a match on the women's side what I give the man. So... How are you going to compete or keep up in women's swimming, women's diving, tennis possibly with 12 people on the team? There's no possible way that it's going to happen. 
And women now are going to be ostracized and be pushed out. And now you're going to have a whole nother ball game. And we're going to have another bitching and moaning session here in the next few years as to why the women no longer play college sports at a few games. There's going to be basketball, probably softball, probably soccer. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if those are the only women's sports still alive. And then, and then track. I say track is that. Track and field because of the Olympics, but yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if that turns into a club. I would not be shocked if that turns into a club that is self-funded. Funded. That means you got to go fundraise yourself if you want to participate in this club. Because, and if you're good enough, let's just be honest, if you're good enough in women's track and field, you're probably going to get a sponsor. You're probably going to be like yeah. like the AAU movement. You're probably going to be moved up into like some sort of, you and, know. And you, you can be like pro, I think. In track, if I'm That's not I'm mistaken, saying. like in do both. Yeah. huge, especially California. Like all the stars put their daughters in these travel volleyball. My boy Mike Williams in the chat. His daughter is one of the best volleyball players in the country. All these women that play volleyball, I could see that being moved. And I don't know if there's an I, I, I. There's it's bigger club scene in volleyball than it is in college. And even though college is huge, we know the SCs and the UCLA's and the Stanford's huge volleyball program. Uh. I don't know if it can sustain, dog, because of what football is doing. Like, football has created a huge wave of of uh, of a sh- just a shit show. Golf, I can see golf being gone. I- I'm just telling you, dog, this is something they have. Again, the NCAA, the non-caring assholes of America, have yet to think forward. They have no forward thinking. They don't proactively think about anything. All they see is ching, 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 ching. They see dollar amount. Oh, we could do that. They don't put a team together to say, okay, the what if scenarios of brainstorming. What if this happens? And then what if this happens? It takes time, so many years, months, years of training to know how to calculate and educate and calendar something. And you can't just say, all right. Let's go from 12 to 14 team playoff. We haven't even played the 12 team playoff yet. Right. And it's already being discussed to go to 14 teams. Now you telling me that's not telling me money is telling them to do it. It's not a, they haven't thought about what it does to the ball States and the Toledo's of the world. Guess what? 14 team playoff starting to going to do. It's going to eliminate the mid major completely. Because there's nobody that's going to go to the mid-major to play football no more. They're going to all want to compete in the 14-team playoffs. So guess what teams are going to? Oregon, SC, Ohio State, Michigan, Alabama, blah, blah, blah. Well, you, you still got to get offered from them schools, though. No, I, I, I get it. But you're not going to get anybody. This is the problem. The portal is going yeah. to eliminate all those guys at the, the way it's currently set up. The Akron's and the Ball State and the MAC all together will be JUCO in essence. Mm. It'll be JUCO in essence, and then trickles down to JUCO being eliminated, trickles down to high school seniors not getting scholarships, which they already aren't, and they're sitting out. Instead of going JUCO, high school seniors are sitting out a year to try to jump in a fucking portal that they never were in in the first place. This is real shit. This is what's happening out here. Mm. And no one wants to dive into it because they're scared to talk about it because these kids are getting screwed over like crazy. And we're only worried about the money portion of it. But the kid doesn't know what the kid doesn't know. The kid don't realize, oh, shit, I don't know any of this. All I know is there's money out there to be made and I can ask for it. And then when they ask for it, they realize, shit. I'm not good enough to play at Alabama. And now I got to enter a portal because I only got $300 a month when the coach recruiting me promised me 30 grand. Mm. It's a big old compi- bunch of shit, dog. Like, this is a joke, man. It's a mockery. Like, and, and you're not going to hear it on mainstream media. You're not going to hear it on anything. The truth of the matter is this, and I talk to these coaches every day, dog. It's like, JB, I wish I could come on your show and tell it like you say it, but I just can't, JB. I I know. I know, dog. And you know how it is. We can't get certain people out here to tell us what we talk to them about off record. 
Yep. It is what it is. And the truth of the matter is, Sabins and everybody else is getting out because if you can't mold a, a kid, what are we doing? So that, I'm just going to take a kid straight out, throw him in the fire, haven't taught him shit. He doesn't have success. Guess what happens to a kid's mental, fragile, little young mind that hasn't lived life yet? Leave. They get discouraged. They bet they claim mental health and they leave. They chase greener pastures because they failed. They got hit in the face because the real world said, hey, Smitty, what's up, homie? And I knocked your ass out. Right. They don't have that no more because the men in the building, the coach, ha- can't mold them and teach them that you're going to take a shot in the fucking mouth and I got to get you back up and face adversity. They're not teaching that no more. They're letting adversity hit them in the face and then they turn their back and then they walk away. Sounds like, no offense, an emotional girl. That's what it was, we've turned it into. And that's why you see women coaching football. Like, let's just be honest. That's the that's what it is. It's turning this thing full circle. And now we have we have a pandemic or an epidemic at our hands in college athletics. I'm just telling you straight out. And I know foot I know females that coach division one basketball that will tell you exactly what I just said is true. And I'm just telling you. It's not like I'm just talking out my ass. There's a true, there's a truth to what I'm saying. And when it comes around and everyone sees this message today on March 13th, 2024, they're gonna they won't give us credit for it. But the bottom line is it'll be said, it'll be archived. It's gonna be right here. And that's the problem. Nobody else will care, and they won't give us credit for it. They won't see it. And the truth of the matter is. I'm going to keep saying it because that's the truth. And I know it's the truth. People don't want to go into it, though. They'll, 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 they'll run from it. They're going to run. Amazing. From it. Amazing take right there. Sometimes when the OG talk, you got to sit back, just listen and let them do it, man. I mean, no one knows the cause platform uh, more, more than JB does. So. Hey, well, it's crazy. Here, and we're not even on number two yet. Matt's not coming, so we got time. But before we take a commercial break here, listen to this. Think about growing up with your parents. And you got to do whatever the hell you wanted to do instead of them telling you things or whatever. Like, would you be sitting here? I know I wouldn't. I'd be pulling on Tuesday in Muncie, Indiana, and playing slow pitch softball. Like, it's just, <laughs> like, and it's a joke, but it's it's also true. I just wouldn't. I just if you allowed me to do what I wanted to do when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I mean, it would just it would have been hell. It, you know, just because you you constantly are on an emotional whim just to do what you feel like you should be doing instead of someone saying, no, you're not doing that. This is what's best for you. And then you start to speak. So many, you know how many times I've talked down kids from leaving because their mama, their brother, their sister died, got sick, got shot. The homie got shot. I I'm failing class. Do you know how many fucking times that I had to talk them down Ask KD, one of the stars on Netflix, ask him if when his brother got shot and killed and his sister died, ask him if he wasn't out the door and I had to fucking keep his ass there forcefully almost and sit him down and say, son, do you want to be the next motherfucker dead? So your mama has to bury a second Mm. offspring, (laughs) Mm. a second child. And he starts crying. He's sitting there. And I'm like, there ain't nothing worse than a parent burying their kid, homie. There's nothing worse than that. So you're going to go join the fucking six feet under club? Like, it makes no sense. There's no more of those conversations, dog. You can't have them no more. We are failing the kids. We cannot mentor them, father figure them, or anything else. Remember. This is a single mother raised kid, KD. And he was ready to go because his sister died. And he wouldn't have got a D1 scholarship. He wouldn't be in the CFL or made it to it. And he wouldn't be successful right now. And we are felling the kids at an all-time fucking high over money. And if everyone can make money, then nobody will make money. And that's the bottom line. That's the truth of the matter. It's like... (laughs) We want to break this down in totality, dog. I could talk about it forever, but we are felling them at a macro level because we can't keep the kid in place and explain to them that the real shit in the real world is going to hit you in the mouth and don't turn your back on it. 
It's going to happen over and over and over and over. So, no, Fix Mothers, A-O, whatever your fucking name is. Fix Mothers. Fathers don't quit as much as you think. Don't get it twisted. Fathers are trying to do it, but that's a whole other discussion. You're a troll, and I don't like your vibe, and you're getting blocked. Um, so, I'm just saying, wow. Smitty, there's a lot to it, but I can't grab KD no more. And then when I grab KD, guess what? He knew I wasn't grabbing him like as an asshole. He knew I was grabbing him because I cared. There is no more care, homie. You can't even show a kid care no more because he's asking the fucking mother in Nick Saban's house at 17 years old how much money I could get. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Like there's a there's a fabric of this thing that's just been torn apart and shredded. And that and I don't know. If don't you, can you think it. though, if a coach was the was the steal fucking showcase that 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 maybe maybe some players would be like you know what it's d- it's deeper it's deeper than like, I have, it's deeper than money i have a deeper relationship with jb or saving or whoever that coach is i'm gonna stay here like I, I don't think giving up from a coach's perspective in terms of trying to build that connection that relationship is the answer at all because if there is no relationship like that then players have no connection no loyalty to you as a coach and or that program, so they're damn sure going to leave. So I think you got to at least try to do what you just said you did and still grab them up and still do that. Yeah, game. you can. That's but the that's... only chance you got of a player being like, you know what? Damn, but they can't really try those me. That's my point. Like, there's no relationship prior to what you're explaining. You're explaining a relationship, meaning what you're explaining is that there has been a prior relationship built. You no longer can build a relationship with mercenaries. Not even in that one year that they're still there playing? No, because you have 30 new players every spring semester now because of the portal rules. How is the head coach going to develop a relationship with 30 new kids every spring and try to retain his old roster when you cannot do it? Because you can't build a relationship with that many kids. It's an impossibility. You used to be able to when you could recruit them for four years. That's where you built your relationship, from high school or JUCO through the process. Now, there is no more relationship building. You've lost that. You've missed You cut it out. Right. Now it is a mercenary bag. Um, <clears throat> it's a mercenary bag s- situation. Now I have to go in here, and I'm asking Nick Saban, where bottom line is you have never been taught any type of respect. Because there's no way I could go in and say to an adult that's been that successful in life, hey, man, I, give me 40 grand. <laughs> like, it, it, it just skip over. Uh, fuck coaching Julio Jones and fucking <laughs> Derrick Henry. Uh, just give me 60 grand. I don't even really know who you are. Like, that is what we've turned this into. And it goes back to seven on seven. It goes back to the, 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 the fucking, you know, all these street agents. It, it's just it's a whole thing, man. And it's... Uh, let me get rid of this. It's a it's a it's an absolute it's an absolutely destruction of college sports as we know it. And that's why you have not only Painter, you got Rick Patino. That's seven, gonna be 72 because I laugh a lot with my players when the laughter goes. I said it earlier in the year at that press conference. I, I'm not enjoying this. And I said it not as far as the team. I'm not enjoying what goes on right now in college basketball because it's you know, I took Peyton Siva, Russ Smith, or Donovan Mitchell, Terry Rogier, and we nurtured them through to become really good. Mashburn got him to his junior year, Francisco Garcia. It's about growing. I, I may be looking at three guys returning next year, and I got to bring in 10. They all become free agents, and we're sitting around at meetings, and what, I, what I, I really don't like about where I'm at right now is we're sitting around meeting and saying, I'm, I'm hearing this guy from North Carolina may be available, this guy from Duke, Cincinnati, this guy from Wisconsin may leave, this guy from Ohio State. And, and to me, uh, I was at Iona, and the entire league was poached. Yeah. The entire league, every good player in the MAC was poached by another school. And for someone growing up who's loved college basketball, it's just not something I like. I think Jay Wright got it. I just meant, now I haven't heard that whole thing, but I just mentioned the MAC out of, out of, out of fucking just shits and giggles. I just mentioned the MAC to you, and they, the whole MAC got poached, he said. And that's just what I said on this show five minutes ago. Yeah. And that was my whole point. Like, he, you used to develop these dudes. You can't no more. And everyone's getting poached. And you have new kids. I just said it two minutes ago. You have too many new kids, so the relationship cannot be built. Just told you that, Smitty, five minutes ago or less. 
Well, you listen, can't... man, the, the answer is to get the transfer portal rules to change. That's really what it comes down to. If the transfer portal rules change, everything that they're, they're, they're saying and they're upset about, for the most part, it'll be fixed. If players can't leave, then they'll be able to mold these players. Even if they're making all shit ton of money or they're not making money, whatever, if they can't, if their options are limited when it comes to leaving, then they're they're going to be forced to stay. They won't have no choice. The problem is we, we've given the players too much freedom on that front, and that's what's leading to these coaches no longer having fun, feeling like they can't really mold the player, which I which that's a very valid point. So if the, if the NCAA would just change that rule, which I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but if they just change that one rule, literally, then I think this problem is solved. So yeah, I, we'll see. Uh, let's take five. We'll come back and take calls for five. Let's do that. We'll come back and take some callers for five, and then uh, and then we got we're gonna get into the rundown. Uh, Keenan Middleton joins us. Uh, Sheena think, Quick joins us. I think uh, Jabron uh, might hop on a little bit later too, my for sure. So love oh. the show. I, I think Jabron. I, I got I just got a text of your brother. He said he might have some time to jump in. We'll see. Yeah, since yeah, especially when we're short on guys. TikTok will be back in five. Bailey, take us away. Top ten. All right. I'm gonna get into my top ten. Matt asked yesterday about my top ten, and he spit his out real quick. I'm gonna pull mine up on the ticker below so the world can see. You can all fucking go oh, the fucking chat. 400 people are gonna talk shit. I don't fucking care. So here we go. I'm going to go Tom Brady. Here we go. Before I pull it up, before, I know you guys saw everything. I'm going to use this criteria. You've had, for me, you've had to at least, to be in my top five, have won a Super Bowl, been to Super Bowl, and just one of the elite of elite. All right? That is how my criteria kind of is. So here we go. Tom Brady, who's the GOAT as far as wins. I do not believe he's the best as far as skill set, but I do believe he's the best quarterback. All right? We're not going to get into that fucking thing. Uh, as far as winning and losing. Um, so Agreed. that's number one for me. Um, I got Troy Aikman because I believe Troy Aikman can travel to any era and be as accurate as any quarterback of all time. He is the fucking – people do not – you're 40 years old, Matt. How do you not believe in fucking Troy Aikman? You know how good he was? Do you really know second, how good he was? The second best quarterback of all time? Yeah, dog. Do you know how good Troy, Troy Aikman fucking was? Aikman? Do you know how good he was? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Elway, I got at three. I got Montana at four. Manning at five. Rodgers at six. Favre at seven. Uh, both of those are very close skill set wise. Both have a Super Bowl, been to two. Marino at eight. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, at eight. Bradshaw at nine because he won so much. He's not as talented as anyone else. And Steve Young at ten because of uh, just he was the first lefty to really dominate his position. Um, that's my top ten. I'll just let it keep ticking, dog. I'm gonna mute my channel. Go ahead. Uh, I don't have a problem with the rest of the top ten, but Troy Aikman even being on the list. Makes you're, me you're, just, you're shitting me, right? You're telling me, me Troy shit not a top 10 quarterback. No, here's mine. Brady, Manning, Elway, Montana, Marino, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, oh, Steve, fuck. Steve Young, Mahomes, and Jim Kelly. See, this is the problem I have. With Troy this. fucking Aikman. Oh, dog. I... It, Drew Brees couldn't hold Troy Aikman's fucking left nutsack from behind his asshole. Here, dude. Yeah, Drew, Brees, Drew, Brees huh? Drew Brees runs circles around Troy Aikman. Huh? Drew Brees runs circles around Troy Aikman, bro. Oh, my bro. God. Yes, bro. Me, bro. God, God. Danny this White could have won those Super Bowls with those This teams. is how I break. And, and people in the chat, Jim Kelly over Aikman. Really? Aikman beat Jim Kelly twice God. in the Super Bowls, you dumb fuck. No, 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 no. Troy Aikman's team beat Jim Kelly. You, so put Jim Kelly on the, you put Jim oh, Kelly so on the so Cowboys, they win six team titles. beat fucking seven teams. Troy Aikman is maybe the most overrated quarterback ever. See, I, I, I almost think that I can say that about Tom Brady. Oh, my fucking God. Oh, my God. Oh, Tom How Brady. can you say Tom Brady is oh, overrated? Tom Brady played in the worst conference for 20 years of all time in the NFL history. Look, that's true. He played in the worst division ever. I, I know. I played in it. But and, he's not and let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break this down, though. If you compare Troy Aikman and Tom Brady, and they we go out here on the park and go fucking throw the football around the park, 
It ain't even fucking close. Well, I've seen no one's saying, saying that. No one's ball. saying that Troy Aikman couldn't throw the ball. He was extremely accurate, and he did a great job running the system that he was asked to run. What, what did he do bad? Nothing. He didn't do anything bad. He did everything right. They won Super Bowls. He was very competitive. They. He's a first At the time he player. was in the NFL, he probably had top two or three NFL arm strengths. I mean, he's he could throw the ball eighty yards. No one's debating all of this, but he, he was, is he not a top ten quarterback, quarterback of all time. time to this day. I don't care about stats and all this Drew Brees bullshit. He didn't throw the football as much. He fucking had a Harper and Irvin and Novacek. They ran 21 personnel play pass. I they did it. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying he's not a top 10 quarterback, in my opinion. Well, I, agree I, I think if you take any of these guys, any of the guys on your list or my list, and put them up behind the Great Wall of Dallas with the NFL's leading rusher of all time, with the fucking playmaker and Jay Novacek and Alvin Harper and all these other motherfuckers, plus... Charles Haley and Jeff Coat and Norton and Deion Sanders and all these other motherfuckers. I mean, goddamn, they. I, I think that any of these quarterbacks win that the Super Bowl. Any of them holds water to me. All right, baby, let's take a few callers uh, to talk about this whole talk about this whole thing. Um, What's the number? Oh. Oh, Sheena's here. Well, we we can take some calls because I don't think she's ready yet, though. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, we good. All right, let's take uh let's take a few calls real quick. Take a few calls and we'll bring her in. What up? You're on the Coach AB show with Big Smitty. Hey man, hey, I have I have a thought about this NIL thing with the um Programs having their strength and conditioning program. Um, when are we going to see one of these clowns bring in their own personal trainer if it hasn't happened already? It, it's, it's starting just, to it's happen, a, brother, and I think it is going to happen. So good call. Uh, appreciate it. We'll get to it. Uh, what up, man? You on the Coach JB show with Big Smitty? What up, what up, what up, Coach? How we doing, Big Smitty? Good, good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I got a question on what is going on down in Carolina. Uh, I believe last year the Panthers got offered two firsts and a second by the Rams for Brian Burns and then proceed to give up a second and a fifth this year for him to the Giants. What's going on down there? Well, well, you know what? It's the perfect timing for that because we have a very special guest we're about to bring in here at any moment now, uh, a Panthers reporter and journalist. Uh, by the name of Sheena Quick. She can answer all those questions about your parents, so stay tuned. Uh, what up, y'all? The Coach JB Show, Big Smitty. Go. What's up, Coach JB? What well, up, Smitty? What Nick up, Saban, Joe? I think Nick Saban's talking more about the money side, which was already paying players, and the transfer portal side that you bringing up is not really discussed by Nick Saban. He's talking more about the money, even though he was already playing the players. Like Big Smitty said, they got to change the rule back, the one-time transfer, and then you got to sit out. If that's fixed, is Nick Saban still have an issue with the players getting paid? Yeah, I, I think it all ties in to, together, though. But we're, uh, appreciate you, dog. We're, uh, we're, we're going to take our guests in here, man. Call our guest is here, so we'll uh, we'll get back to the calls later on. Appreciate you guys calling in, uh, Smitty. Man, introduce our fine, esteemed, beautiful guest. Yes, 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 yes. She is a legendary reporter, journalist. Uh, my sister in the industry, you know, breaking news. Um, you saw you may see her on the McAfee show in the morning. Um, amazing following on social. Like I said, she covers all things Carolina Panthers. Uh, the one and only Sheena Quick. Welcome to the show. Let's bring her in. Could we clap it up, JB? Can we clap it up for her? Yeah. Quick? <laughs> there you go. How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? You're good. You're good. good. It's good to How see you. Doing? Appreciate you coming on with us. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm I'm cool with Dr. Aaron, Aaron Aaron. So I know you guys are close. Florida State alum, and I, I grew sure. up in Charleston, so I know you guys are all kind of uh, Florida State Seminole alum. Um, I appreciate you jumping on here. I used to be on McAfee all the time too, so I knew he uh, he, gave, he said great things about you when I asked him. So I appreciate you jumping on with us. Oh, nice, yeah, nice. Thanks, nice. thanks you guys for having me. Of course, man. I think we can, we can get straight to it. It's funny that we, we took fan calls and literally right when you joined in, they asked a question about what's going on with the Carolina Panthers and specifically, uh, you know, obviously Brian Burns that they weren't able to, 
get a deal uh, there with the Panthers. Can you kind of give us some insight on what what went down and why why is Bryant no longer with the Panthers today? It's just been a shit show, like from the top down. And honestly, Dan Morgan and Dave Canales don't deserve a lot of flat for not getting a first because they kind of walked into a mess. Um, mm. Two head coaches ago, we were told that Brian Burns was a priority. And as soon as they turned down those two first, they should have been prepared to pay him immediately. Then we wouldn't be in this mess. Um, what ended up happening is time went on. You guys know that market resets every one to two years. So now he's going to want more money. And they just didn't have, well, I'm going to say they didn't have it to give, but there's so many holes on a two and 15 team. You can't fix all of that in one off season. You just can't. Right. I agree. Right. You, you guys showed up the old line for a, a Southern California kid, Bryce Young. Um, he's connected with another South, Southern California head coach and Dave Canales, who I've coached with and against for a long time growing up in junior college out here in L.A. Uh, that fit right there. I love they need to show up the old line. You got two additions recently. I, I love. And then you just got a big D line of trend uh, addition yesterday from the Niners. Hey, Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, you guys are making some good moves, though, in two days in free agency. Uh, do you yeah. agree to that? I do. I do. Um, they lost a lot on the defensive side of the ball. They lost five starters and Jeremy Chin. So those are going to be some big holes that they have to fill. I mean, that's a lot to lose in the first offseason, and you have a rookie you know, coach. But I believe in Dan Morgan. A lot of people, I got a lot of flack from that. They're like, well, so why do you believe in him just because he's a former player? No, not because he's a former player. It's because – it's been so trash lately. He's one of the only people in the front office, if not the only person that knows winning Carolina football. There's only three players that have had a winning season in a Carolina uniform. So you have to bring in something, some type of grit, some type of history and culture, or you're just wandering aimlessly like we saw last season with Frank Wright. Hey, Greg Olson need to come and drop some rhymes too. And uh, be, be the MC for the motherfucker. He need to be you want, the MC. You want d Red to come back? Hell yeah, G Ray need to come back and a hey, bring Crown back, bring CMC, bring everybody, bring all the OGs back. Yeah, <laughs> listen, hey. somebody got to take the ox core because I don't know who's DJing on game days, but it it's already hard. Yes, they need to give Greg Olson the ox core. It's horrible. <laughs> it is That's horrible. Why they, hold on, time out. This is breaking news right here. That's why the parents have been struggling the last few years. The wrong person <laughs> has the ox core. The players the are not the right way before the, the games. Court. We got it. We just fixed the problem right there. Shane, alive on the show. Hey, Sheena, yeah, me. Yeah. Right, right <laughs> in the brass tacks. You guys got Deontay Johnson yesterday. It, it gives me a lot of, uh, I don't know. Say it, JB. Say it. Robbie. Robbie vibes. Uh, Robbie Anderson. Let me ask you. Listen, oh. ESPN, all these mainstream media platforms have said how great of a player that you guys got in all this. And listen, I got, of course, I got players playing, 28 of them in the NFL right now. Plus, I got guys that will tell you differently. I think Mike Tomlin is saying, you know what? We just added by subtracting. And I think addition by subtraction is a real thing. Do you think you guys got a, what I call a shit bird, or do you like this addition? <laughs> Coach, uh, a shit bird. Hey, I got <laughs> Sheena. You got a whole book. Hey, Dr. Aaron will tell you, I got a chapter oh my in God. There. I don't want to, you know, hey, there's there's three words. I don't want to use them with you, but there's there's three things that kids are and NFL are. They're shitbirds, which is like the ultimate. You got to have probably one on your team. That means they're probably not changing. They're a bad apple, but you have to have it because he's probably your best player. Okay. Then you got, okay. then we got what we call at the bottom of the pecking order, which I am, Smitty is, everybody is. It's a non-malicious person who just screws up a lot. We call those guys slap dicks. <laughs> You know what? Someone that was on that show with you gave me, told me that terminology a couple years ago. And I was like, well, what is it? They just kept saying, I was like, what is it? What is it? But now I, now that one I knew, but I just never heard shit bird. I, I own the trademark, Literally. by the way. But anyway. There's one more, though, Jamie, that, that, that we're forgetting, right? Smitty. See, Smitty. Sheena, Smitty <laughs> want to put you on blast. Smitty want to And then the middle one is what we call fuck sticks. Now, <laughs> those guys, you can get them back to being slapdick, Sheena. But once you get a shit bird uh, into that level, there's no coming back from being a shit bird. Oh, I don't wow. know if Johnson can come back to being one of those other two. I think he's a shit bird. I think personally. Now, you may have different opinion and you cover him. You think it's a good get because he's a player or do you like the locker room aspect? Well, both of those are really, really, really important. But they had to shore up that wide receiver room 
immediately. Adam Thielen did not come here to be wide receiver one. I think he came here thinking he was going to be in a mentor role and a slot receiver, you know, somebody to get you a third down conversion. I don't think he came into it expecting to shoulder the entire load, but that's what ended up happening because he's the vet. He's getting bumped off of his routes. Bryce has less than two seconds to throw the ball and he's a, he's a sure set of hands. Now, I think that talent wise, Deontay Johnson definitely elevates that room. Locker room wise, that's where there's an issue in Carolina. I'm not saying that the, the locker room is bickering or anything like that, but there's just no clear cut leader now that you've gotten rid of Ryan Burns. Um, Jack Thompson may or may not be back. Uh, the most tenured player is is JJ Jansen. He's the long snapper. But you got you saw a lot of that last year where they're just I'm not gonna say there wasn't camaraderie, but they, they were just kind of just wandering through the season. They had a corner of, of, of defensive players that got along great. The only person left in that corner is JC Horn. Everybody else has been traded. Mm. So um, so that that's the thing. This is a, a team that's still struggling to find an identity. And if he does have those character flaws, that could be a challenge. But maybe, you know, maybe Canales is up to it. They, I feel like he's really fresh, innovative, and I don't think he's scared to get in these guys' ass if he needs be. I feel you. Oh, let, me ask, let, me, let me ask you this real quick, Shana. Um, you mentioned that Shaq may not be returning, so I want to ask you this: Is there? Are you hearing anything right now? Is there any uh, other potential big moves that, that you're hearing that may be out there for the Panthers, whether in, whether it's a trade or uh, signing some big name guy or in, anything like that? I think that they're still going to. They they need to tap into that safety market. This is a really deep safety uh, free agency class, and they need safeties. They just traded to. Well, they're expected to either trade or release Von Bell, and then they traded – well, not traded, I'm sorry. Jeremy Chin was a free agent. He went and he signed with the Commanders. So I think they're going to be looking to add to that safety room and cornerback room because Dante Jackson is gone. Dante Jackson is gone. You do have J.C. Horn, but he struggled to stay healthy every season that he's been in Carolina. You saw what happened when the Panthers had that thin, that thin depth at cornerback. They were a game out from making the postseason for the first mm. time since, what, 2017? And yeah. instead, Tom Brady and Mike Evans went bombs over Baghdad because they were down to two corners. That's a good point, man. And I'm glad you're bringing up some of the other teams within within the division. Obviously, it's been some big time movement going on with uh, Kirk O'Bain's Kirk Cousins going to the ATL. Man, I feel like the Panthers have gotten a little better this offseason already, but other I agree. teams have also gotten better as well. Like, what's what's the sense of energy I guess going on in Carolina in in reference to? seeing some of these other moves that have been made. Obviously, the, the, the Bucks, you know, signed Baker to a, a pretty big deal. I mean, they're keeping him. They got their keep Mike Evans. Like, other teams are making movement as well. Do you feel like, although the Panthers have improved, that they're almost staying stagnant because the other teams are also getting better? Incrementally, yes. But it, it's all going to depend on what type of leap Bryce Young makes this season. I feel like we keep, we don't really know what he is as an NFL quarterback yet. It just wasn't enough. Uh, there were just too many outside factors that, that, uh, that don't allow us to give him a proper analysis for, for his rookie season. I just feel like you can't really assess him with all the other stuff that was going on around him in the front office in the locker room and on the field sack 62 times. But um, I, let me just say this. I don't know who Kirk's agent is and Chris Jenner works hard. The devil works hard, but Kirk cousins agent works harder i am not mad at it and this is a monster payday he's definitely an upgrade for them down in atlanta at that position so that secondary and what the panthers are able to add to that via draft or free agency is going to be very important man, man, man. rewinding back to your uh locker room talk like as a coach former coach not a coach anymore as a former coach just a slap dick now sheena now you know the difference <laughs> all three um i'm just a slap dick um it sounds like there's a huge culture issue that's what I think Dave has to kind of you gotta you go into a new program like an organization. He's the he knows from the best, in my opinion, Pete Carroll, who's created new cultures everywhere he's been. SC, he had to take a bad organization and reculture it. Seattle, he did the same. Dave learned from Pete being a GA at SC, being under him at Seattle. So I think he understands there's a culture issue there, but hopefully the ownership can allow him and give him autonomy to restructure the culture because if not he's just there you know pissing into the wind and it's kind of uh unfortunate for coaches that's kind of what happens nowadays yeah. you you don't get autonomy um it's kind of hurt you and, and that's in any profession but i think that locker room has to have a new culture and i think dave's going to bring that i'm excited what happens there in charlotte well that's the thing it's not that they need a new culture they need a culture period 
Because, you know, like I said, there's not a lot of guys that have been around winning Carolina football. Brian Burns' entire 2019 draft class, gone. And that 2020 draft class where they went all defense, only Derrick Brown remains. They only have nine players on the roster out of the 24 that they drafted between 2020 and 2022. So when there's a revolving door, it's hard to set and keep a culture. Had Brian Burns stayed for another season, this would have been his fourth head coach. Damn. I think his third or fourth DC. That's and third head coach. I mean, fourth head coach with two interims because he was there for Rivera. It's just so you have to have you got to have some type of stability to even be able to start to think about culture and having a culture. And Sheena, that's why I tell Smitty every day. I'm not I'm not I'm not totally against or down on Sam Darnold just yet because mm. he, look what he went through in Carolina. Look who the guys who went through Carolina has done when they left there and what they did before there. He had no shot. He was in a horrible situation in New York in the Jets. He goes to another horrible one in Carolina, and we didn't get yeah. to see him in Frisco because he's a backup. But he's finally had some competency with coaching and a roster around him. I think he'll have another uh, competent, at least, play caller in, in Minnesota. And he, if he keeps Justin Jefferson and Addison, then you'll see him with this first two real wide out uh, core of guys so i'm not your point makes my point to smitty like i think that guys go there and they almost go there to die sometimes and that's, and that's what it feels like yeah that's what it feels like because if you think about the free agent moves last year they gave miles sanders they threw a bag at miles sanders yeah they um they paid hayden Hurst. they brought von bell in they brought um adam in and they brought i want to say there's one and they brought dj chark in yeah. out of those the only one that really panned out was adam thielen because you see they're ready to move on from Von Bell. But when it comes down to it, I think that, again, the ineptitude of the front office has made a mess that Canales and Morgan cannot clean up in one season. And I'm just being realistic. You know, I know a lot of the Panthers fans were a little pissed yesterday on the um, McAfee show, but I said that I don't expect this team to be competitive right away. It would be a surprise to me because it was just it's, it's a lot of cleanup that they're doing right now. And it's not an indictment on Canales and Morgan because they didn't inherit anything. You know what I'm saying? Two and 15, you're, you're basically starting from scratch. And right. so um, I do think that it's important to note that when players go elsewhere, they tend to ball out because you and I, you guys and I know that it's culture and system fit are not just buzzwords. Those are real things in the NFL. You know, Miles Sanders came into a situation where this was a power run blocking offensive line that looked great. I'm going to say they look great, but they look good under Steve Wilkes. But then you come in and, and you know, Frank Reich is like, well, we're not a smash mouth team. I don't know what we are, but we're not that. And it's like, that's what you need to be to get some wins. And that's why he's at home right now. So in Carolina, we've had the revolving door and people are trying to force schemes that they don't have the personnel for. That's the biggest issue. And I think that what Canals did in Tampa, he made the best with what he had and tailored his offensive scheme to what he actually had on the roster. Not what he wanted to do, not what he hoped to do in two to three years, but he did what he needed to do right then and there to get as much out of that roster that he could. And hopefully David Tepper trusts him enough to let him come in and do that same thing. We've already seen him um, part with some, some I'm not going to say longtime Panthers players, but some of the more tenured players, because he doesn't have an emotional connection to any of these players. He's literally able to go in here objectively and be like, okay, this is what I see on film. This is what I don't like. This is what I want. And he's able to make those moves. So I'm really interested in seeing how the rest of this free agency and the draft shake out for him. Um, they still have the same scouting department that they had last year. And, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of those, Carolina has not historically hit on picks after the first round they haven't they don't have a great track record hopefully they can turn that around this year you know what you, you mentioned you know uh yeah. you, you stating that you don't think this thing will be turned around like next season which i think is a realistic response yeah. real, realistic answer so let me ask you this two questions number one how soon do you think they will be able to uh, turn things around number one number two how much time do you think canales realistically has to do that before they want to move on because you know we Today's NFL is like, what have you done for me lately? We live in a microwave society. You got to win yeah. right now or you're out. Hey, Sheena, before you answer, though, like, Smitty, this ain't college, though. He can't go out and actively recruit new bodies like Dion. Like, this ain't right. – this is like get what yeah. I can get. And I got to restructure. can't flip that roster every year. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, Sheena. Sorry. No, you're good. He just can't, he can't flip the roster every year. I give it about maybe two seasons. And I don't think that David Tepper is going to be quick to pull – the pull to pull um 
Love Canales. Him. I think that he's going to give him some grace. I think that as long as he's seeing some improvement, the problem that he had with Frank Wright was there was no improvement and there was no like sense of urgency. It's like, oh yeah, we're 0-6 and you know. No, that's not okay. Right. <laughs> that's not okay. Y'all brought in this rock star staff. Y'all had me on all these different national shows saying that y'all y'all were the Avengers and y'all were going to you know come and turn things around only to put up two wins. And I think that that was David, Te David Tepper's issue. A lot of people felt like, oh, well, Frank Wright should have gotten a whole season for what? When you see that it's not improving at all and the team starts moving backwards, you cut it off immediately. You cut it off right at the head. And it just looked worse because of how Steve Wilkes had that roster looking at the end of the previous season. Then you bring Frank Reich in. He's the first offensive minded head coach in Carolina and the offense absolutely stinks. Mm. So I do think that he real, will be given some grace. Let me ask you a, a, a brass tax question. Like I know, I know Dave well, but, like the the common folk out there that don't understand how this business works and operates, like I don't think I think they would want to know. But what is your take covering the team and the take from the fan base and the casual? We like to say uh, the, the Twitter gurus out there who think that hiring Dave was a good move. Now this is a first time head coach at any level. Like that's what a lot of people don't realize. We give Frank Reich a lot of fl slack or flack, but like he's been there. He's done it for a long time in other places. Dave has it. He's an offensive minded guy. I love Dave. I'm just asking like, what do they think in Carolina that we hired a new booty head coach in essence? New booty. Is he Not the new guy booty. Over the hump. <laughs> who's never been a head coach. Like it's a different ball game as a head coach. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think that the fan base is kind of split. Half of them like, who the hell is this guy? Where did he come from? And the other half is like, okay, yeah, they're looking at Bryce's development because you had so much tied into this quarterback. You need to give him as much support as possible. Not saying you should neglect all the other areas of the ball, other phases of the game. But if you do want to get the most out of your rookie quarterback, and let's let's just face it, guys, Carolina wasn't a glowing destination for for coaches in this coaching cycle. It's simply, it just simply was not. And I'm not saying that that they hired Dave by default. I'm not saying that at all. But they didn't have this huge pool of candidates that were clamoring to come to Carolina and coach. So I think the fan base is kind of split. I think that the more that he talks and the more that they hear him speak and actually assess his ball knowledge, I think that they'll feel a lot better. But nothing said nothing wins a crowd over like W's. That's true. If he comes in and he wins, whatever, he, him being a first time, hey, they're not going to care. Don't matter. So Winning so all things. Winning cares all, yep. <laughs> I think they're kind of like cautiously optimistic at this point. I love it. I love it. Well, love Sheena, that. we don't want to hold you all day, man. I know you are a busy woman. Anything new you got going on? Anything you want to promote or shout out? Man, I, I feel like, you know, we met years ago, I think on social media first, then we met in person, but it's been seeing you grow and grow. And I sent you a text yesterday, Thank man. It's, been, uh, it's inspiring to see your growth, man, and continue to build and build, man. Uh, you know, shout out to you and all things that you're doing. But is there anything that you want to let our fans know? We got 2,300 people in here listening to you right now. Wow. We got a lot of fans in the show. Fans it, for your tape, fans for your look, fans like for McAfee, everything. But, you know, it ain't 50,000 like McAfee. And I don't know if you realize, but Smitty called you man like seven times. So we got to correct his Fox Sports. Like, we got to get his shit down right, it's, too. This, he, is, this he, is the part. Hey, baby, baby, baby. When I talk to Sheena, when I talk to Sheena, hey, Smitty. Sheena, Sheena, explain to Smitty what happens on Tuesdays in the NFL. See, they don't practice a lot in the NFL on Tuesdays, Smitty. What they do is they go try to learn how to speak to the media. They do, like, <laughs> you know, financial shit. Smitty, I'm That's sending funny. you Tuesdays with Sheena to learn how to speak to women on live air. We don't call them <laughs> men. And we say, uh, you know, other shit. So, smitty has got a lot to learn, Sheena. So, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you're beautiful. Thank you for joining us. Tell Aaron Thank I said you guys. And a Florida State alum out there. And uh, Jermaine Johnson was Ooh. my, you know, Jermaine played for me. And, and uh, so, one of your great ACC defensive player of the year, now with the Jets. Um, yeah. So, uh, got to go out there and watch him a few times and uh, see Aaron and, 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 and shout out to her and Travis and all my boys. So, Appreciate you and uh, keep killing it. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate you. Peace. Uh, clap, it up, clap it up. Clap it up. Time. Clap it up. Smitty called Sheena man eight times. Man is a phrase that you say. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like it's, it's, it's kind of like 
if you, if you if you use the term guys, like if you're talking to like a group of people, it might be men and women. And you might say you guys like, duh, you're not calling the women a, a man. That's just a term that you use. You know what I'm saying? And it's the JB show of Big Smitty. We're not over here politically correct, but no, I've done that, JB. If anybody has the experience on this show and this platform of doing that, it is I. I've done the, the big time network, Fox Sports, live TV. You can't curse. Yeah. You watch you say. I did it. I did it for two years, JB. Every yeah, single yeah, day. Yeah. Monday through Friday. We we right here. This is a down to earth. I got I a hoodie on. You, you. Sure you ain't doing that. And I had to school you, and I ain't never been in main media. <laughs> JB. I didn't think I didn't think we was on. I didn't think we was on that type of time right with this type of show. I thought we were down to earth. Oh, I thought are. we could just Talk it's like still, we in the barbershop, talk like we in the hood. Hey, JB want to be polit politically correct, y'all. Hey, look, y'all, he's switching up, chat. JB switching up. Hell no. Nah. Um, first of all, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of comments. Ask her about coaching. She's not a coach. And I had no interest in asking her about coaching from the female side because I've had women on before that I've asked that to. She covers a football team, and she's not a coach. I, why would I even bring that up? And y'all want me to kill a dead horse. Smitty, we got uh, time is it? Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Middleton we up took next. a few calls because like, the timing didn't work out. I mean, we could go back to calls. You know why? Because you told me she was on a whole nother time again. Two fuck ups today. Smitty's made. She told he told me she would be on an hour and a half later. She comes on an hour and a half early, and then uh, she, hopped on, she, she hopped on earlier. She hopped on yeah. earlier. Eh? Then we take calls, take and then it's right in the middle of. Uh, I'm thinking. We're taking calls, but then I, she's in the backdrop, so I didn't know. JB, sudden change. Sudden change. We do this all the time in football, man. We'll, we'll be in the middle of a scrimmage. You know, middle, middle. matter of fact, we'll be in the middle of one-on-ones. Coach will be like, eh, it's time to scrimmage. Red zone, red zone. Hurry up. Let's go. First D, first D, first D. Tank, 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 tank. It's fucking chaos, organized chaos. You got to figure it out right now. I'm used to that environment. Obviously, you ain't been coaching a little bit. You lost your touch, JB. You you got a little shook. Sheena came on. We adjust. We made adjustments, and we execute at a high level. Don't lose what you've gained and what you've built and what you used to do for so long, JB. I'm disappointed in you. Atina, I'm always a, a, a gentleman, though, so I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> I'm always a gentleman. Just because I cuss doesn't mean I'm not a gentleman. <laughs> don't get it twisted. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. Um, Smitty. Look, 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 Jose, yo, he got, he, JB got shook, didn't he? <laughs> that son changed, got, that son changed, got him. What I got shook by? That, that son changed. Sheena jumped on early, you didn't know what to do. You, uh, hey, so, I don't know. Jose, since you want to be a production analyst, come on over. You want to be a production guy? Since, what if we had another guest on at that time, fuck idiot? All right, so, um. Uh, uh, Tina, it's just we just showing we just showing respect to our guest. She's she works at uh, local Fox Sports out in, in, in you know down south. So we got to make sure that we're not putting her in a bad spot. It depends, like depending who our guest is, we'll never change. We're always who we are, but we're also like respect respectful enough to understand. Like, okay, like for example, my guy Sheldon was on yesterday. That's my guy, so a little it's a little different. But we're not gonna put him in a bad spot. There was a couple of questions where he's like, "Ah, I can't really answer that." We like, cool. We fell back. We move forward. We are real. We are the really show up on the earth. We're never gonna put people who support us and help us out in a bad position or bad spot. Come on now, Tina. I thought you would know that, sister. Hey, but what are we waiting on, Keenan? Let's dive into the set, a couple other things here. Uh, Derrick Henry to the Ravens, two-year deal, sixteen million dollars. Um. Go ahead, Smitty. You liked it. You talked it into existence a few weeks ago, months ago. You liked that move. I told you I did not. Um, like I said, we're never going to change who we are. I'm. I. 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 I called it. I said. Uh, I said basically that I don't like it because of the offense. He's more of a downhill guy. Um, I actually still don't like it after it happened. <laughs> so I'm not changing that pros uh, aspect. You need more of a. You need a Josh Jacobs there. You need a. Dobbins, you need a, a you know Mitchell. They'll get Mitchell back, uh, hopefully. But at the same time, uh, I don't like Derrick Henry. I just listen. I love what he's doing in the off season. He's going to grind. He's going to come back stronger than ever. And I could see him having a hell of a year. I could see him having a fifteen hundred year yard year. 
But I still don't like the dynamic of Lamar and Derek. I just think it's like oil and water. Like it just doesn't mesh very well. And that and that comes down to the mesh in the run game. I don't like it. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Professional one. Smitty, you like it? Go ahead. I mean, I, I love it, man. Derrick Henry is a uh, future Hall of Famer. Still, even at this age, one of the back, best backs, excuse me, in the NFL. I think he still got over a thousand rushing yards last year, even though he missed multiple games. Uh, put him in a winning organization with a physical offensive line, one of the best O lines in the league. You put him with uh, a quarterback who's been leading their team in rushing, I think, the last five seasons. Now you're taking off a ton of pressure off of Lamar Jackson, who he shouldn't lead the lead, uh, lead his team in rushing this year. He shouldn't have to because he has that monster behind him. I do understand from a schematic standpoint. They will have to make some adjustments, but that's what you do every single season anyway. You make adjustments based upon your your roster and who you have. I know Lamar was trying to get to a point where he can, you know, throw a little more, run less, and I think this naturally helps him do that. And just having that dual threat, two you have two of the best rushers just in general in the backfield at all times. Different styles. You call it thunder and lightning, however way you want to call it. But I can see them lining up in pistol formation a lot, still allowing Derrick Henry to get that, that head of steam, but still put him in, in a position where Lamar can turn around, kind of read that DN, keep the ball, kind of some 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 RPO style of action, but from a pistol standpoint. Because I do agree, like, obviously, Derrick Henry is a north and south runner. You don't want that guy going. As a defensive player, if we play against Derrick Henry, our goal will be to make him go east and west, and we feel like we have won. So you got to figure out a scheme that will work for him, but but they'll figure it out, and I love it. Yeah, I don't love it at all, and everything you said is not right. But anyway, okay, cool. let's move on. Fuck me, then. Uh, we got our main man, Key Stocks, our main man, St. Louis Cardinal, pitcher extraordinaire, former Yankee, uh, Juco product, Oregonian native, Keenan Middleton joining us. Top it up, JB. What's up, y'all? Well How done, you Redbirds. You got the all red on, JB. I know you like that. Oh. Oh. Hey, what you doing? You eating lunch, dog? No, no, I just got done on the field. That's why I'm a little late. Sorry about that. Oh, shit. You good. Yeah, God, fuck. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, you come on anytime. This is your day. I, I got to ask you, um, you got all kind of like – Redbird Media following me on Twitter and shit now, reposting shit. I'm like, I'm like, hey, yeah. what's up? Yes, hey, your, your, girl, your wife on Twitter, but you not, huh? No, no, absolutely not. No, my mom's on there too, but too many, I think your too mom followed me on Instagram, from, if I'm not mistaken. All the people I think. on, huh? I think your mom or somebody followed me on Instagram this week. I think yeah, probably she's she's active on there. I love it. Hey, you like but no too many Twitter fingers for me. I can't do it. Hey, Smitty, he said no, absolutely not. <laughs> he politically corrected answered it too yeah, yeah no, absolutely no. not yeah. and he could have been like hey fuck no nah. <laughs> uh, hey key what up man what uh all right so we getting down to brass tacks you got about what a week and a half two weeks yeah, yeah we're getting there yeah i gotta i gotta i gotta hit you up on the side we gotta, i gotta get out to dodger stadium absolutely. uh for day one i gotta get out there uh i ain't been to dodger i don't think he gonna jb be acting scared he, be scared <laughs> he, ain't, gonna, he ain't gonna follow i ain't dude, been to bro. a dodger game key and like fuck you know what i've actually been to the cardinal stadium before I've been or le- more recently more yeah. recent than I have been to the Dodger Stadium, and that was yeah. re- recruiting. I just rolled up there, wanted to see it and shit when I was recruiting in St. Louis. So, um, but you're gonna be in Arizona first. I might see you there too. I'll hit you up. I'll be in Scottsdale. My boy Pat Perez, Jordan golfer, uh, when he gets oh, off really? their tour, it kind of marries right up. So he'll be back in Scottsdale. I'll go chill with him, and uh, and you'll be in Arizona before you yeah. head to Dodger Stadium. Then I'll follow you back. So it it it'd be cool. Uh, yeah, what, what's 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 the grind like right now? Is it getting is it get does it get more serious as you get closer to opening day, or is it kind of always the same? Uh, for sure. Like beginning of camp, you start ramping up. We're just throwing side sessions like bullpens, no hitters and stuff. And we throw one or two of those. Then we get it in to where we throw some live BPs like scrimmages. You throw to your own guys, no fielders out there. Then you start getting into games. So when you start getting into games, you want to pitch a game, have a couple of days off pitch again but then towards the end as you start ramping up you're gonna have a back-to-back you're gonna have a pitch with a day in between so that way they know you're ready for the season uh just right about now it's like about that time we're starting to make cuts and you're starting to see like all right this is what the roster is going to look like uh and the team that you're going to go to battle with every day now is when the meetings get a little bit more serious and it's not just such broad information it's 
the meetings are very uh, directed and intentional. How many guys? Real quick, and, well, real, real quick, JB, and it might be a silly question. I just don't know. Do you guys like? Do you guys watch film like on the on the other opponent? Like, like, like yeah. describe how those meetings. I, again, I'm a novice fan, so you know, excuse yeah. my ignorance. I'm just trying to think. Like, how was a typical film session in in the uh -huh. baseball world? So, I mean, like during the season is is a lot more in depth. You have a series against the team, and in the first game of the series, you'll go in with all the pitchers, and we'll go over every hitter, their tendencies, their strengths, their weaknesses. And a lot of pitching right now is analytics, so it's trying to figure out all the things that they're good at and the things that you're good at and what, what will work best for you. Um, and so it's a lot of information, and for everybody, it's going to be different. The, the lefty that throws sidearm is going to be different. Scouting mm -hmm. important than me, the guy that throws hard with, with a changeup. Um, it's just paying attention and knowing how to use that against people. Uh, and, and nowadays, everybody is so damn good. It feels like these scouting reports is like, don't throw this, don't do that. So you just got to figure out what your strengths are and go right. with it and be able to ride with it. How many, how many guys that got to get cut, the unfortunate part of the business, how many guys got to get cut before opening day? I would say there was at least 60, 70 people in camp, and we got 26 people on the roster. So, like 40 but, people getting cut? There, there, there's people doubled up in lockers, people sharing lockers in, in the beginning of spring training. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like it's Juco, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Straight up, right. And if you're a young guy, like, who gives a damn? As long as I got a locker room in the big league locker room, who cares? Hey, so what do you, what, right now, as we get closer to this thing, like, so you're playing other teams, obviously, I see, I see the scores and shit. Like, are you traveling at all, or are you just – it's all local Florida? Uh, so here in Florida is a little different. It's my first Florida spring, but we got, like, Astros, uh, Nationals about 15 minutes away, and then I think the next closest is about two hours away. So most of our games, it feels like, are, are against like, these close teams. But, like, right now we've been on the road the last couple of days, I think, in uh, Fort Myers, like mm -hmm. two, three hours away from here. And uh, that's like a two day trip, too. So they, they I think they just stay out here because all those people I haven't seen them today or yesterday. It feels like a ghost town here. There's not really that here, just the guys that stayed back. that won't be pitching these next couple of days. But you guys drive. Mm -hmm. If you're young, you got to ride the bus. But if, if you got service time, you could drive. You got your family here with you. You could drive. Oh, OK, <laughs> but you're not flying to these things in the preseason. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. That's the that's the bad part about it. Driving, getting off your off the bus or out of your car, having to play in the game and then driving your ass right back. That's the, hey, that's where you drive, though. That's Juco. Fuck, hey, eight-hour, 16-hour drive, hey, right. shit. Straight up, right. Listen, it, it, were you playing in Oregon? I, I can imagine too many Juco's up there. Oh, uh, yeah. there, There's just – I went to the Juco that was in the same town as the University of Oregon, just trying to get some – some more scouts out there and stuff and ended up working out. I, I always tell my players, like, that's a good feeder school to go to. Because when would you guys have to play though, like snow and shit, or no? No, oh no, oh no, not snow, not not for baseball. It was cold up there this weekend. I went back home for my, my high school kids, and it was and cold I, up there, but it that's was a good job. That's what I want to ask you. What's your guys do in basketball? Ah, uh, we took fifth. We took fifth. Uh, we went to the Elite Eight, ended up taking fifth. We lost to the team that won the state championship the last couple of years. So, I mean, it was a good game. We broke a bunch of records and shit this year. It was my, my homeboy that brought me over. It was his first year coaching. Uh, and he broke the record for wins in the school. He broke the record for, I think, longest run in the playoffs for that school. So, we did some special things, and we're ready to run it back next year. Hell, yeah. Right that's right. I followed it. I saw you. I was like, hell, yeah. I wanted to know what you guys did. Uh, hey, so – I gotta ask you to uh, right now. You guys are are you? Do you start like a like a football like preseason? Uh, you, you're playing preseason, and our first game of the year is Alabama or whatever. Is it the same thing in baseball, or do you have so many games that you don't really break it down? Like, okay, we're we're studying the Dodgers right now because we have a first three game stretch with them. Are right. you work? Is that how it do goes or no? No, nah, not really. No, I mean, of course, that you can look at it that way. Of course, that will get you ready. So, say I'm gonna pitch my last game against some guys that are similar to Mookie Betts or Otani or whatever. I'm going to go in there with that game plan. All right, this is what I'm trying to execute. And if I fail or succeed, then I change the game plan off of that. Or maybe I just didn't execute. So I'm going to do the same thing just and then just try to execute. I, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. But these guys, I mean, these hitters, they're so damn good. Like, but sometimes they key in on the certain stuff. So at, each at-bat to at-bat might be different. His first at-bat might not be like his second or his third. So that's the tough part of playing, and that's why you got to really pay attention to the game. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let me ask you this, man. Like, for a pitcher, like, especially, like, let's say you're pitching, like, majority of the game or whatever, how much recovery, like, rest time do you, like, really, realistically need, 
you know, post game, like, you know, to like get that elbow, get that shoulder back. Cause I was like, you said, you guys can't pitch like every single game. Cause you just, it's just not healthy. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Like I, how do you guys, I guess, be able to recover? How long does that, does that take for you? Uh, for, I mean, for the relievers though, we gotta be ready every day. For yeah. You, like, yeah. Season starts, we, we pitch back to back, we pitch back to back to back, but starters, those guys that pitch at length, they'll pitch, they'll start in the game on, on like, so they have day one through five. It's like we, most teams are on five man rotations for starters. They'll start a day. They'll have a day off where they do a bunch of recovery. And then the next day on their day two, they throw another side. Like they'll go and practice again on, off the mound. Then they have two days off and then they'll pitch again. Um, so, I mean, like most of that they're working and, and it's still in between. That's why I'm like starter. That shit wouldn't be, that shit wasn't for me. That's yeah. just for them. Like they can have that. Um, my workload and how I throw, like I'm just a max effort guy. I don't know how to dial it back and throw these side sessions that they throw at 80%. I'm not very good at that. I'm all gas, no breaks. But yeah. some of these guys perfect it. And you sit there. I watched Miles Michaelis out there today, and he just seems like he's just flipping stuff in. But when he gets into the game, he can repeat that at a different speed. And that's that's the part that separates people from the others. Mm. Hey, let me ask you a question professionally speaking. Like, so there's NFL trades going on like crazy. It's been crazy. First few days, cats are getting huge amounts of money. Not baseball money, but they're getting some big money. Yeah. Uh, where are you at with a couple comments that have been made by certain players uh, out here? Like uh, Josh Jacobs left the, the Raiders. He's now in Green Bay. Um, he basically came out and said, listen, everyone wants to talk about the players not being loyal. When are we going to talk about the franchises being loyal mm. and trying to keep us? Um, when is that ever going to be mentioned? Is that the same thing in baseball? And do you leave a place? Like I know a lot of people in the chat loved you and, and I loved you in New York with the Yankees. They're like, they probably need you back there. Do you look back at things and say, oh, shit, they screwed up by letting me go, or or I'm glad to get out of there? Is that a real thing, Like just like any sport? Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't have any bad blood with the Yankees at all. I mean, when it really came down to making my decision, it was just going to be here or there, and I, just, I decided um, to come here. But there is there is that, that loyalty aspect. Like I just seen it the other day. Uh, there's just so much manipulation in the game of baseball that, that we don't have a control of as players as, as far as young players just getting sent down so they don't collect service time. Or even as far as like the other day, a player from, I believe it was the Giants, they won their arbitration hearing um, for, mm. uh, we'll say, a seven mil. And then they ended up releasing that player because they signed somebody else and they, won't, and they don't have to pay that guy his arbitration in full. And that guy, when they went to arbitration, they asked for a certain amount. He said, no, nah, fuck that. He asked for more, and he won. So that club, since he won that, they are like, oh, we can go out and get another third baseman, and we can release this dude, and we don't have to pay him his money that we lost to in the arbitration case. So there is so much in these games that people don't even know about, and then, like, if a player leaves the team, he's not loyal. Like, no, there's so much stuff in these games that y'all don't even know about, and I think, I think that for football, it's probably got to be even worse. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's crazy. Who's your team in football, though? Uh, I don't really – I've never had a favorite team for any sport. I've, I've never really have. I'm uh, the same way. My, when my you wife played, played, I don't think you could do it. As a former player, yeah. I never had a team either. Like, I grew up a Rams fan and all that, but I'm like I, – and then I send players to play, and yeah. then you'll see when you start coaching, you're going to have guys yeah. that go yeah. on and play, and you're like, yeah. I don't pick a team. I got guys playing all over. They play each other. Uh, you never know either. You may be on the Dodgers next year. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah, you know. so, like, I don't know how you – you know, that shit's got to be crazy. It's got to be – it's a stressor, though. People don't realize how how stressful this this business is because it's so cutthroat. Um, coaching, playing, the whole thing. So, uh, it's it's uh, we just had Sheena Quick on who covers the Panthers. Uh, all these moves being made. And it's like, well, I just want to see competitive football again. Last year yeah. I thought was the least – competitive i've seen in a while uh, i agree yeah i agree as far as football i'm like we i i don't i don't have a favorite team but every sunday my boys would come over and we're watching it in the man cave we're chilling and watching this shit and i'm like man this year feels like there's just a couple of teams that i know are gonna win this and <laughs> unfortunately i knew it was gonna be the fucking chiefs i can't stand kermit i can't hear him i can't stand his wife hearing him talk I can't stand that uh, shit Kermit, dog. Kermit. I'm, I'm with you on that. That's she hilarious. Hates me, boy. I love. I love. It. I love JB, it. JB, what's that thing he be doing on the on the field? <laughs> like it's my fucking weirdest shit, man. I'll be real. That motherfucker, like. <laughs> 
Like, this motherfucker's weird, dog. Like, it was fucking weird ass shit, man. Just fucking, just play, dog. Uh, hey, hey, I know you commented on Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, a post I made. Hey, that um, was hilarious, yo. I was crying. I was crying. I don't know which one was funnier. I seen that one, and then I seen uh, the Steelers just saw, just uh, signed somebody. Worth yeah, the, uh, the, 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 black, the black pussy one. <laughs> <laughs> that shit right there had me dead. That shit, hey, that that shit went crazy. I, I, <laughs> I started laughing. My mom, my wife was like, what are you laughing at? I showed her. She's never seen that movie. So I'm like, oh, we're going to have to watch that. Yeah. You ain't <laughs> never saw it? No, my wife hasn't. My, I started oh, laughing. Damn. She's like, why are you laughing so hard? And I showed her. And she's like, what's that? And I was like, okay, <laughs> now we got to watch it. Uh, hey, shout out to that motherfucker. 180 mil to go yeah. out there. I, shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, he got to do what it do. I'm gonna see what he does in Atlanta, man. <laughs> shit, I hope his, right. I, I just hope his shit gets better and his, his Achilles. Like that's, a, that's a hell of a risk, man. Like yeah, right. you don't see it in baseball, huh? Like if, if a cat comes off Tommy John, he ain't getting 180 mil, is he? Yeah, not unless he show it. Uh, show it just did. He just had surgery <laughs> last year. I'm like, yeah, but Shohei, he's different. He's, he's different. different. He's, yeah, he's, he's in a different he's, category. He's him over there. Yeah. If I find him, he never pitches like he ever pitches again. But he's still gonna hit that bitch. He's still, still and, and, and you know what? He probably gonna hit even better now because he ain't got a fucking pitch. He just no, doing one yeah. thing. Hey, straight up. In nineteen, he wasn't pitching a whole lot. He just because he had his first TJ in eighteen. In eighteen, he didn't pitch at all in nineteen. And then nineteen, he had he had good numbers. Like he was hitting still, and like like you said. He's got one thing on the field to focus on. Like, of course, he's going to rehab his elbow and stuff off the, like behind the scenes. But when he's out there hitting, he's got one thing to worry about. I don't got to go get on the mound after this. I just got to worry about locking in. Seven, hey, 700 hey. mil is crazy. Like, mm -hmm. I'm from the hood. So, like, I'm just, so when, when I hear, t like, seven, like, I, I can't even right. fathom what that means. Y'all yeah. make some crazy fucking money in baseball. Do y'all realize how much money? Y'all making crazy money in baseball. Like, yeah. When you yeah, hear 700 yeah. M's, like, what does that do for you? Like, I, I get the jitters inside. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. It makes me think I, I did the wrong thing by not hitting. That's what makes me think. <laughs> and pitchers were the ones getting all the bread, bread back yeah, in the day. Yeah. Roger Clemens, Nolan Ryan, they set the tone, like, getting all this. I was like, That's shit. Weird. Even I mean, Shannon Park about got it, some money. Uh, Otani and Yamamoto, they signed two guys and they're damn near a billion dollars. That's two That's guys. One. Two guys, bro. Two guys. And they're yeah. going to spread that shit out, like, the yeah, way they uh -huh. figured it out, huh? Like it was yeah, like that deferred yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. money ball shit. Yeah, and no, speaking of those up, two, right. speaking that's of those two guys, the, the the Dodgers play actually first though. They play in a week, I think. They got the two game uh like little series in South Korea. I think March twenty eighth and twenty first. Mm. Um, that's kind of crazy. I, 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 how often are you guys? You guys play like in these unique low South Korea? He's outside the country. Like, is that uh -huh. something that's new, or you guys do that all the time? No, I feel like just in the last four or five years, they've been starting to do that a lot. I can remember in 19, we played down in Mexico when I was with the Angels. Uh, I've seen some other people play in London, stuff like that. We're playing at Rick, Rickwood Field this year, which is the old stadium Jackie Robinson used to play in, which is very cool. I mean, for me, myself, I don't know how everybody else think about it, but being one of the br young brothers that's on this team, I'm pretty excited about it, bro. Like, to be able to go there and, I mean, those guys, they, they did that so we could be here nowadays. Uh, so I appreciate that, and I'm gonna love playing there. I'm, I'm that's something that I'm looking forward to during the season, and something that I'll share or cherish for the rest of my life. Oh yeah, California JUCO product right there, Jackie Robinson, Pasadena JUCO. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, a lot of people don't know history of JUCO, like the people that came out of JUCO, like we, shit, unbelievable. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, yeah. a JUCO product, he's in the news. Yeah. He might be the next VP of the country uh, and retire. <laughs> What's, I, hey, what didn't his brother play at the same JUCO as him? Yeah, yeah my cousin, my cousin played against him. Yeah, my cousin was at Siskiyou's. Did he? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Siskiyou. Then he went to Vandy Vanderbilt. The brother mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. They they don't talk or something. It's crazy. They got a, a they're not a, cool at all. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They got yeah. A crazy relationship. The whole family's all fucked up. That's what I heard. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they fucked up. Hey, De before you get out of here, though, I got to ask you, though. I know you, you're a fan or you could be a fan, but Derrick Henry, we know he's a hell of a running back and all that. He's now teaming up with Lamar in Baltimore. I don't think it's a fit, but you like that tandem? I mean, just I guess to keep pressure off of Lamar, I mean, it's the one thing that uh, that's one thing they could do, I guess. Um, that guy, I feel like he was wasting his damn time in, in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. 
So, I mean, to see him get out of a team that's going to compete every year, or get on a team that's going to compete every year, that's what I'm excited to see. Like, I remember being – I was at the Oregon High School Combine in high school seeing this dude and being like, man. And then now seeing him on the field, like, I never even thought he was going to be that. I knew the motherfucker was special, but I did not know he was going to be like that. He's yeah, a grown-ass man. I've seen him in person yeah, one right. time. He's motherfucking huge. He's like a, <laughs> right, right. Like a creative player on Madden. This, this yeah. Hey, hey, hey Key, before you shake, there, so – I wanted to ask you going back to this this question, like so people leave certain teams, they go to a new team. Are you conscious, self-conscious when you leave a place that you don't blackball yourself or give yourself like you know, like you just said, like I ain't got no ill will. Gardner Johnson is going back to Philadelphia Eagles. He was there a year ago. He signs, leaves, goes to Detroit. Now he comes back. On his way out, playing a fucking video game, he was like, Man, fuck Philadelphia fans. I hate y'all. Blah, 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 blah. Now the motherfucker's back. Like, is that something that you try to avoid doing? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. In this game, I'm like, th- their personalities in football are a little bit different. So maybe you, you're able to reel that back in. But like, as many games as we play over seven months, like 162 games in seven months, there's going to be some things that people say and do that really irk the shit out of you. I mean, it, it's just, it is what it is. We're with each other every day. But at the same time, like, you can't go too far. You can't cross that line and say, fuck these whole people. Because then <laughs> like, you, you, you never know where you're going to The whole, the up, whole right? city, the whole community, everybody. Yeah, right. Hey, Keith, Like, I don't think I'll ever play for the White Sox ever again, but I've never just said, fuck the White Sox. I've never said that. <laughs> hey, Not hey, hey. Me. They got helmets on, at least. Like, motherfuckers start throwing shit at them. You got cats <laughs> from huge stadiums. You don't know where you are every day. You got open face. You might get hit by everybody in Philly. For real, I get swung on with a bag of nickels out the stand or something. Hey, uh, you got cope or seeds? Uh, I have a uh, red man, two inches. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got that grizzly. Okay, okay. Hey, okay. <laughs> I was, I, I used to have red man in this side and yep. Copenhagen on this side, and okay. I put the, I put some whiskey in the, in both. Yeah, you know the vibes. Like when I when I know I'm not pitching, I do the Kahlua and cinnamon in the red man, and that's just fire. That's just gas. Y'all really, speak a foreign what? language to me right now. <laughs> I gotta fuck with that. Kahlua and cinnamon in the red man. Yes, yes. Really? Mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, yes. A referee once told me that they, they were gonna throw me out because I, when I yelled at him, I spit dip on him, motherfucker. <laughs> That's disgusting, JB. Golly. <laughs> That's disgusting. You got your ass beat for that, JB. That's disgusting. <laughs> hey, TJ's in the chat. He'll tell you. I was the only high school coach. I had a fucking. Everybody was like, you're dipping. I'm like, no, that's bubblegum, motherfucker. Get that out of here. Funny. Hey, Key, I appreciate you, man. Work Boot Wednesdays, Key Stocks every Wednesday. Tune in. I uh, can't wait to opening day and seeing you on the mound. And I, I we got to hook up in Arizona or, or with the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. I'm going to be there. I'm going to come. I say what I do and do what I say. I don't know about Smitty. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm going to see you there. I'm going to see you there. Just yeah. let me know. Hey, work your magic. See if I can get down with you somewhere in in oh, yeah. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. All right, bet. All right, bet. I appreciate you, dog. Tell the family I said what's up. We'll see you later on. See y'all, boys. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Clap it up, man. Key stars. Key stars. Um, trust that spit cups all over. <laughs> I used to have spit cups all in the office, Mitty. Hey, that's what you that's what's called that's why you have to have full autonomy to rebuild a program. You gotta have full autonomy. You gotta spit cups in a high school and you're not allowed to have tobacco. You got tobacco. Fuck it. It is what it is. You got full autonomy. Just don't be stupid about it. Put your boss in, in, in harm's way and, and be smart about it and you'll be all right. Um it is what it is. I need full autonomy of this show. Well, then it'll crash. <laughs> uh TJ told Latrell no cap. They were both with me at Cabrillo, Long Beach Cabrillo. Shout out. Uh, you know who called me the other day, TJ Latrell? Uh, Lamprick. Rip Lamprick called me the other day uh, just out of shits and giggles and asked me about uh, a couple pieces of equipment that he was trying to get if I would help him get it. So Cabrillo's. Uh, How's he doing? He, he doing good? Who? Rick. How you know Rick? Bro, we met Rick at um. what event was that? Now nah, you don't know. I'm I was at some event in Long Beach, man. I, I met Rick, man. Now, he's a real one, man. He's been he's been there for a long time. How's he doing? Though? I haven't talked to him. I ain't seen him probably over a year. Who? Fucking Rick. Why are we, we taking who? Like who, who? Who are we talking about right now? Rick who? 
from Cabrillo. I can't remember the fucking Shut your name. motherfucking ass up. Yeah, it makes me be bullshit. He think he a good actor and shit. Uh, right. I had JV shook for a minute. You didn't, you didn't have me. I already knew what you were doing. You didn't have me. Uh, all right, let's dive into it. Let's keep let's keep going. Rick, Rick, look at that. You know, black people. Yeah. Rick, Rick. Our main man, show fan favorite. He's been on the show four times. We're going to get him on hopefully this week. I talked to him yesterday. Patrick Queen. Woo! Stirring up drama. Not only did he go from the Ravens <laughs> to the Steelers, there can't be more hated rivalry within divisions than these two. <laughs> and it's all over the internet. Lamar is already saying, you're dead to me. Uh, likely they're all fucking around with the whole Tiki Barber thing. Uh, Smitty's rant about Tiki Barber is going to go out today, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Tiki, Tiki, name Tiki? Uh, Patrick Tiki. Queen to the Steelers, dog. I, listen, he got paid. He got 41 mil. I, I congratulated him yesterday. Uh, he was out fishing, of course. Um, I, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. This is like my point to you, though, about this game being different. It's about money now. It's not about, I'm not saying they're not competitive, but they're, it's not about like, I don't, do you, just personal question. Like, I don't, I don't know if that could have happened back then or, or would have happened, but you can't tell me that you think Ray Lewis would have left the Ravens and went to the Steelers. It just wasn't going to happen back then. They were going to make a – he would have either been gone out of there, that division, or I just never seen anything like it, dog. I've never seen anything like it. Even in free agency, Smitty, players did not sign within the division. I'm curious to go back in history. I'm going to have to do some research, but I don't recall this happening this much. Do you? I don't recall it happening this much, but I think Ray Lewis would have made that move if the Ravens didn't want to pay him. <laughs> if, if, within the first early part of his career, if the Ravens didn't want to pay him after his rookie contract, he's going to go wherever the money is. And that's what Patrick Queen is, is doing. Ain't no loyalty in the NFL. You know, this ain't no high school. We got, like, real deal rivalries, and I ain't, I ain't going to the West Side. I'd never go to Ben Davis. I'd never do that. Even college, you know, college is kind of more pro style now too. But NFL, you going where that bread is at, where that money's at. You know, we have players who you never thought would ever leave their teams, you know, and and, and, and would leave their franchise late in their career because that's what they have to do. I never thought Favre would leave Green Bay. He leaves Green Bay, goes to the Jets for a brief period, and then goes to the Vikings. You know what I'm saying? NFC North, right there. It's so like we we've seen it in smaller in smaller spurts, but spurts, excuse me. But we're seeing it way more this offseason. I will say. And I mean, it's like even with Saquon, like Tiki's getting mad as well. Well, shit, the Giants don't want to pay me. Why do you care where I'm going now? You you want me to be like loyal to the Giants and, and you guys are not loyal to me? It, it just doesn't make sense. So guys got to go where they're wanted. And the Steelers want it. Patrick Queen, he's he fits perfectly to me. And the Steelers, yeah. just the, the, their energy, their aura. And I think that's a huge fit. And the Steelers are building a Super Bowl-ready team. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, um, you don't feel me. I'm blocking somebody on Twitter. I, I don't know. I, I just can't stand it personally. It's just me being the old man on the hill or in the porch or whatever you guys say. I, I don't. I can't stand it uh, because that's just me, I guess. But I can't stand the way. Yeah, my window. Right. I can't stand the rain. I don't like it. Uh, but it is what it is. Now I like him getting paid. I like because I love Pat. I, you know all that. But I just uh... call Pat right now and tell him that, that you don't like the move. Tell him he said he shouldn't have left. Tell Pat right now you, you thought it was a bad move. You should never stay in the division. Do it right now on the show. Well, I already talked to him. Did you tell him you like, like, like the move? I told him congratulations. I just told you I wouldn't tell him I don't like the move. But I'm gonna tell him. To, I'm gonna ask him tomorrow if I get him on the show. Is there anything to going to a rival? Now, I don't know if you saw, um, I don't know if you saw Smitty. He's talking about uh, Tomlin telling him, you're not a Raven, you belong a Stiller, uh, when they play each other every year. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, listen, we just asked Key about Jacob saying the teams have no loyalty. And 
when when is that going to be brought up? You talk about the players not having loyalty. When are you going to bring up the player, the you know, the teams not having loyalty? So, listen, I think Pat loved there there, he, but I think when they signed Roquan, I think they knew that the writing was on the wall. Eventually, I don't think they could have kept both of them and then still sign the D lineman that they signed and then sign get, get Derrick Henry and then and they still got to go get some wideouts. I know OBJ I think is done right. Well, he hasn't officially announced it, but I haven't heard. I mean, nobody picked him up right now. Is that true? I'm sorry. I'm reading the comments. You know they've been talking about banning TikTok. That's been a real big news, like, about, like, actually ha- happening. I don't know if this Diamond Kendrick person said that the house just passed the bill. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, like, cut your heart. But that's a big deal for, like, multiple reasons. So I was just, you know, trying to see that. Yeah. No, I'm with uh, you, though. I am with you, though, man. I mean... I don't know if the Ravens expected Matt Abuke, the D tackle, to have the type of season that he had. But since he did, you have to pay him. He's one of the best D linemen in, in, the, in the game. Like you said, you got to play Roquan. He's your best linebacker and your leader. So it is the, it's just the salary cap. It just is what it is. It's crazy. We just mentioned, we talked about the Dodgers. They paid uh, uh, Shohei and then uh, what was the other, the other cap they signed? Japanese player. I can't remember. His, I can't say his name probably. I don't want to mess it up. But like Keenan said, they spent almost a, about a billion dollars on two players because in baseball ain't no salary cap you just spend whatever you want to spend but nfl you obviously got to do that and you just can't keep everybody i'm sure they would have loved to keep patrick queen on the ravens but it's life you know they lost him they lost geno smith i mean do you feel like the ravens it might be a little worse next year yeah um yeah again i just don't think they're going to win a super bowl um i just don't know if they have the genetic makeup um but I don't know. Let, let's transition real quick to your point because you made it. I'm on. I'm live on TikTok right now. They ba- they passed the Congress passed the bill to ban the app to actually vote on it. I believe. Um, so that ne- this the next part of it goes to voting on it. I think they didn't just. And our our amazing producer in the background said, "If you read the bill, it actually bans X and Rumble, not TikTok." He said it's huge. So if Twitter get banned, that that that's kind of. Bad for business. Yeah, I don't think they can fun. ban. I don't think they can ban Twitter. I don't know. TikTok, I gotta, look, I'm TikTok's just not on in America. Twitter, Twitter is banned. Um, we gotta go to threads. We, we gotta start going heavy on threads. That's gonna be gone too. Facebook. No, no. Threads. Threads is um like Twi- who says Twitter. Twitter's gone? Who brought, who made that up? Nothing is gone yet. They are trying to ban X and Rumble. Not made up. Come on now, I'll produce. Don't don't call. Listen, we got we got a top tier producer in the background here. But don't, that's don't not the bill. Like that. the I'll bring his ass on the screen amend. right now. They just amended the. Listen, it's not. It's for TikTok. It's fucking to pass the bill to actually vote to get rid of TikTok. So that's what the number one thing is. The rumors are that they're going to go after Twitter and that next. It, it, I don't see them banning an American social media platform, but. Tell you right now, huh, I told you what I said. If I was a president around this motherfucker, so you actually agreeing with a uh, Biden? Hey, this ain't Biden. It is. Hell, hell, no. Nah. I would ban all that shit for one year. This is Biden. Hey, everybody on TikTok right now, they're like, fuck. <laughs> it's so much money you know. being made though from social media influencers. What? People like you, you make you make you make good bread on there. It's Not like, really. Damn. I like that. But let me you make let me money do though. That. I mean, it's still you money. Hustle. Hustle. It was two hours. Gotta get, hours. New hustle. gotta get new hustle. See, I'm not gonna be the one crying. These 17, 23, four, five years old. I'm I'm actually laughing. You know why? Because I make peanuts on there. You know why? why? All these influencers on there that are, have all these millions of followers and shit. <laughs> they're like, Mama, I gotta get a job. All the TikTok influencers are about to be fucked. What you gonna get back doing then? Like, if we lose all social media, what you gonna do? Like, I'm gonna probably start selling candy again, um, selling fruities, jailbreaking fire sticks, selling them. Um, nah, it's gonna be gone. You can't. There's no need for that no more. Everybody has it directly though. You can't make no money on that. Okay, I'm gonna still. Nah, people still using. Contrary to belief, trust me. I, I got a call the other day. Don't know you still do your fire stick thing? I ain't did that in six years, brother. Um, I guess focusing on my clothing brand more. Fucking, I don't know, bro. Yeah. Know. Um, Biden trying to ban uh, 
all social media probably because so the motherfuckers can't show who he is. <laughs> and he probably trying to ban. I heard he's trying to ban uh, X videos. Like, golly, he's trying to ban everything. Here we go. The it- so-called TikTok ban is a Trojan horse. The president will be given the power to ban websites, not just apps. The person breaking the new law is deemed to be the U.S. or offshore internet hosting service or app store, not the foreign adversary. Website, huh? I don't know what that means. Too much lingo for me. Political. Yeah, I'm from the hood. I, I need that to be dumbed down. Somebody, somebody, translate that right now in the chat. Like translate that because I don't know what the fuck I just read. I, I was the type of student. Hey, that so I was saying, smart. It's not the adversary. It's not. It's not China that has that owns TikTok. It's not. It's the app store. That means Apple. That means all those people that actually allow you to have the bill or the the app store is going to be the ones in direct and, uh, at fault. So, listen, I just just being on this earth forty eight years, I would say it does not get anywhere. I don't believe this is going to happen. It's too much money and popular. I don't see that being allowed. I don't see it happening. I'm just going to keep it real. I'm not really shaking in my fucking boots. Our lives it's- are going to be ruined. Your your young lives, not mine. <laughs> I know how to hustle. See, I hustle. Social media is a hustle, though. You know, like, you know what's gonna happen? Y'all what? don't know how to hustle. So nobody in, from your years under knows how to do anything, any trade. You motherfuckers are fucked. I I am praying tonight that they ban social media so I can see the seventeen to twenty nine year olds go out and change my oil. I can't wait. And they're going to crumble and cry. Have you seen the motherfuckers getting tattoos crying? I ain't seen that. Ah! Have you seen these motherfucking bitch man cats? They get <coughs> tattooed. I'm going to touch that. Have you seen these motherfuckers on me? That's the men in the world. They're going to fucking cry over a tattoo. Can you imagine them crying when social media gets deleted? I just want to see it for like a couple months. I just want I just want to laugh. I want to see it. You won't see it because they they you won't have social media to see it. You won't know. No, we will see it. We'll see when it's gone. <laughs> you but you won't like how you gonna see it? You can't what you gonna see. If they told you like we're gonna ban all social media, everybody's equal. We're gonna bring it back though. Um uh, like I would, would you, just go into you, you would you be optimistic to start from scratch and say, All right, now now I know how to do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be the million follower guy. Oh, well, yeah, in that sense, yeah, that's your question for sure, 100%. I, there's so many things I would do differently if I was starting from scratch. I guess for me, though, I just, I don't want that, bro. My career is so tied to social media at this point. I'm a hustler. I, I know life before social media. I used to work I used to work in sales, cold calling and grinding and working off commission plus salary. If you don't reach your numbers, then you get a warning. If you don't reach it again, you get fired. I'm from that type of element. I'm from their claw. You you know, I, you know, I, I'm I'm that type of level of guy. You know, my defense is, is impregnable. My offense is, is magnificent. You know, I'm untouchable. I'm the guy. <laughs> you know what happens, Vinny? What? The looting, the dumbass shit out there is going to be crazy. Motherfucker's going to be robbing everybody. Hey, you get rid of social media, that's another issue you're going to have. And or... Or you get back to brass tacks and you're going to have motherfuckers actually getting put down, laid down by common folk plus police because ain't nobody with no cameras. Ain't no, ain't no, you ain't going to see it no more, Smitty. Shit. I might walk outside and just start laying motherfuckers down. Fuck it. <laughs> well, they might start robbing your ass and then you ain't hey, going to know about, about it. Hey, Smitty, I, we do the show tomorrow and shit. And I'm like, I got like three bodies in the back of the fucking in, in the house. Everybody gonna be like, "Hey, yo, the crime rate since social media has been away has went down." Now it ain't went down. You're just not seeing shit. You ain't seeing it. Yeah. Hell yeah! It's always tell you. You are saying it's so bad now. Kids are so bad now. They're doing everything. Nah, motherfucker, you just seeing this shit. Hey, Y'all was on the same bullshit. Reaction, though. Remember that? I was getting bodies out here in the There's 80s. I know that for a fact. There's gonna be a reaction if you ban the shit. There's gonna be a reaction, and it's gonna, gonna be, be a riot in LA. Uh, I, you know, I, I want to see the soft pussies, though, that just can't adapt and are going to crumble because their daddies and their mamas never taught them that the real world's going to hit you in the mouth. And that's going to hit a lot of these motherfuckers. I, nah, people will adapt because you don't have a choice. It, it ain't going to happen right away, though. 
but it's sink or swim. Like it's human nature to adapt. Even if you think somebody's soft and all that stuff, the reason why they're soft because they adapted to this current culture. You adapt to whatever your environment is. They might cry and complain for a minute, but at some point you got to pay rent. You got to pay your light bill. So you have no choice but to figure it out. And you're going to start figuring it out, you know? And it's not like they're removing the internet. So a lot of these kids will still, not kids, people my age and younger, will still figure out ways to use utilize the internet in another way. You might see more program engineers. You might see more coders. You might see more, you know, just back-end stuff when it comes to, like, making some other apps and things of that nature. I think, you know, we'll still be very heavy computer-based because this generation isn't the – the welders and all that shit. That's all manual labor shit that y'all just had to do because y'all just was trying to outwork everybody. We're a lot smarter than, than y'all, so we're going to think smarter and, and think, how can we make the most money the fastest and most efficient way? Where y'all was like, how can I just work the hardest and work 24-hour shift? And rah, 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 rah. That's why y'all bodies all fucked up at like 50 years old and can't I walk. I your money, though, stuff. more will sink than swim because your motherfuckers ain't never been taught anything and you refuse to lose it. All you motherfuckers are so entitled and in in instant... You guys want instant fucking gratification. You you motherfuckers want, 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 and haven't done shit. Look at the NIL. I can't wait. You motherfuckers would sink so goddamn fast. Not you and your journey, but the young kids will sink so fucking fast. They have no trades of skills. So they're, they're going to go out here and talk about swim or sink or swim. We're going to see a lot of motherfuckers drown. I tell you that, especially these young cats. Woo, I can't wait. A That's lot of people in your generation struggling right now because, like, a lot of their jobs in the warehouse are getting taken over by robots, and they don't uh, – they didn't make the adjustments – to train themselves to use the internet and know how to have typing skills and know how to have a, I know so many people in the hood, old, older cats who don't even have a fucking email, JB. They ain't even got a debit card. They still got cash underneath the mattress. That's your generation. Though, What happened in COVID put us, set us back. I don't even know how long for giving out all this money that we gave out to a bunch of fucking, let's be honest, nobody's a bunch of freeloading enabled fucking instant gratification who wants to freeload off of whatever, instead of paying their shit and doing whatever all the other fucking guys have to do in this country and pay taxes and do all that. We wanted free handout. Give me handout, handout, handout. Do you imagine what they're going to ask for this time? What? Dog, it's going to get out of hand, Smitty. I'm telling you. But anyway, I don't give a fuck. I swear to God, I don't really give a fuck. I want to move on to some sports while we can because I hope they all fucking sink. Um, Patrick Queen, we agree to that. Hopefully, we'll get him on. I'll hit him up right now. Gardner Johnson saying we just talked about fuck Philly, and now he's back in Philly. Karma's a motherfucker. And then I want to get to Joe Mixon, to the Texans, and I want to talk Texans in general. If I had to grade right now, okay, I'm, I'm moving Pittsburgh up the ladder now. It's quiet as kept, though. I, I I got Green Bay. I got Houston Texans. I got Pittsburgh. And quiet as kept. I love what Carolina's doing. So, because people only want to see pretty, sexy hires or signings they don't ever look into the trenches they don't talk about who we signed up front they signed hunt in carolina they signed damian lewis in carolina and then they signed our main man from frisco yesterday on the d-line side of things i like what carolina's doing i actually do and they're not going to be talked about because those aren't sexy signings they're not the, the sexy guy. The sexy guy that got signed was Deontay Johnson in Carolina, who's an absolute shitbird, and everyone's going to push the narrative that it was a hell of a fucking signing. They don't talk about Hunt for 100 mil that's going to protect Bryce Young. They're not going to talk about all these O-line and D-line signings. I love it. I love Carolina starting from inside out like they should, and I think that's the way they should do it, and I like that. Uh, Eric Armstead, Carolina? I don't believe that happened, did it? Eric Armstead? Hold on. I ain't, I ain't heard. That's my guy. I ain't heard that. But I do know this. The Chargers um, are going to save about $6.5 million by releasing Eric Kendricks, which they did. But the 49ers just signed him to a one-year deal. I'm going to try to get him on the show, man. I'm going to try to get Eric on the show either tomorrow or uh, top of next week. That's, oh. that's one of my guys, too. So I'll make that oh. happen. Eric Kendricks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get him on. 
Finally do something for the show. I've been getting people on the show fucking back to back. I've been carrying the show all season. This new, this new version of the season. This is I've your first two people on the show. <laughs> you yeah, I've been people. carrying the show. New people, different, different you style of energy. People on the show in the last six you, months. You, you, you bring the same people on the show every, every single week. I'm getting new people on the show, switching it up, new people. All right, let's grade. Let's grade this real quick. Uh, I don't know if you're smart enough or well versed enough or educated enough to do this. So I just, I just basically just. I just like shit it on you every which way. I shit it on you ethnically, uh, pr- uh racistly, racist. Um, racially. Let's grade them out real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna move uh, my picks. I'm I'm taking Houston Texans as my number one best off season today. Third day. They're the number one team that made the mess moves. I'm grading them out as A plus in Houston. The addition of Mixon, the addition of Mixon, the addition of of um, of Hunter. That's a great get right there too. Uh, Minnesota lost one there. Uh, I wish we'd ask. We didn't know, but we'd ask uh, your boy yesterday. Um, they're making moves, and they're not they're not happy and satisfied about getting to the playoffs. That's the, that's what I appreciate and what they're doing there. I'm going to move Pittsburgh now to number two as an a minus. And I also going to keep green Bay right there as an a minus. Obviously they got Pat's queen. I think addition by subtraction by getting rid of Deontay Johnson helped them. And then the addition of Russell Wilson, we think, and I think you agree um, is the biggest quarterback signing of the year. So you can argue that or, or Kirk Cousins. So, you know, I, I like I like what Pittsburgh's doing, and I love that Tomlin's trying to go out with a bang. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, other good teams, other the, – the team that, that everyone's bashing right now everywhere – is the Cowboys. Cowboys. They make zero moves, JB. Well, they so did boy. make one move. What'd they do? They signed um, a running back, from what I understand, Bailey. I don't know if you knew this. Um, did you hear who the Cowboys signed? What, today? Yeah. Let me see. I ain't saying who they signed. Sign? Bailey, show us who they signed. Who the Cowboys sign? What's Smitty looking Dylan? What are you looking at? It's not Cat Williams, homie. <laughs> after fresh <laughs> off, after hey, fresh I forgot off, about this. Club Shay Shay. He is going to the Cowboys. Uh, Cat Williams ran a four nine seven. <laughs> does, does, does anyone really give a fuck? I'm gonna be honest. Why is him running a forty? Bigger news <laughs> than fucking like Aaron Rodgers being the VP. I'm just trying to figure out what is going on. Why are we worried about a guy that's fifty nine years old running a forty for the Cowboys at Cowboy Stadium? Bottom line is, it's a joke, it's a meme, it's a gif, whatever you want to say. The Cowboys have done diddly shit, Smitty. Diddly shit. And uh, shout out to Cat Williams for running a sub five flat. I wouldn't run a sub seven flat. Yeah, I made you, but you never did, though. So that's like, I never did. And I never ran a 40. <laughs> I bet you, I bet you did. I didn't yeah. need to. You uh, old school, stay in the pocket. Where are you at with the Cowboys, dog? They were talking about they were all in. Now you got Des Bryant. You got all these people talking shit like, Dak, get ready to get blamed again. <laughs> Jerry probably like, hey, I'm fed up. I've done everything possible to put you guys in position to win Super Bowl. At this point, at this point in time, it's up to you. You got, you guys are one of the most loaded rosters in the NFL still right now with making no moves. Loaded what? You still have one of the most lo- rosters. Loaded what? Rosters, rosters, roasters. Yeah, you said roaster <laughs> from the hood, JB. Don't correct me like that live on the show. You do, you do that behind the scenes. You call me after the show, so hey, darn, that's how we, that's how we do that. Like, JB type dude, call. Hey, he call you out right there. You be, you be in front. Of, he, he was a friend when you hanging out like with the homies. There's a couple girls around, 
JB the type of dude like go over there and put you in a headlock, start doing some childish shit in front of the girls. Like, what the fuck you doing, JB? We got the chicks right here. You over here? Hey, don't know, be Smitty. You remember that one time when when you, when you got beat up and mother knocked your ass out? In front of the women, like damn, you ain't got no like. Nah, I, see, I, like, I, don't know, I know a motherfucker like that. Those are bitch made cats. Uh, the motherfucker rosters. <laughs> <laughs> Look, er- earlier today he said you called Sheena man eight times. Then you you can't say roster. What's f- what's fucking next? Third strike. I'm I'm gonna have to knock you out. You said, you, said you got a finger shot when I said that. He got real serious when I said knock you out. His whole face changed. He was laughing. He got real serious. I didn't even hear you. Um. Anyway, I don't care about TikTok. Hopefully, they ban it. Whatever. I don't care. Let them know, Edwin. Let them know, Edwin. Edwin Hogan. Edwin Hogan out here looking like fucking. My friend looking like uh, De La Soul. <laughs> hey, so look. Let's get into uh, the Browns adding your boy, Jameis Winston. That's my guy. Big move right Is there. he going to be the future starter there, though? Because I'm thinking something's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, if Deshaun, I mean, he's been getting hurt. He can't stay healthy. So I think Jameis has to be ready and stay ready to play. It can definitely happen. No one was going on over there. Jameis has always played. You, If you think about it, even with the Saints, just the way things have worked out, the starters, and I'm not wishing on nobody, but they always get hurt when Jameis is a backup. And Jameis finds a way to get on the field. So I like Jameis a lot. He can throw with the best of them. We're talking about pure arm talents. He can make any throw on the field. The problem is he knows that. And because he knows that, his confidence is a little too high and he makes poor decisions. That's the only that's his only issue. If he could just be a little smarter on his decision making, he'd be a top tier, top 10 quarterback in the NFL. He has all the talent in the world. Smitty, we're gonna do a spaces tonight at 5 p.m. I'm not gonna be there. <laughs> See, he talking about me blasting him out. This is roster. Uh, we're gonna do a space at five p.m. I'll do it with a new co-host, um, Sheena Quick. If he doesn't, Smitty don't want to do it. Views, uh, without me, views gonna go down tremendously. Without me, views only be up. We over three thousand. Uh, if, if I announced online, I would no longer be on the show. The first two days, it'll be high because people gonna want to tune in and to know why I'm not on here. The next week, shit gonna plummet. They're like, oh, my God, bring back Big Smitty. Bring back. We don't want the backward question mark on here again. She was horrible. Smitty was your best co-host. He was fun. He was opposite of you. He had experience. He looked good. What? The backwards question mark. What was her name? It's an upside-down Coke bottle. Uh, same shit. We call it Coke bottle. Coke, because that's what it is, Coke. You mean like, like a soda, like a pop? Coke, yeah, you drink Coke. Pe- you know, I want a Coke, Smitty. What do you want? I want Pepsi. You mean like you make a, like a Coke, like a Coca Cola? Coke, like Coca Cola. No, Coke is anything. Coke is anything. Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Shasta, Tab, anything. No, those are different pops, but Coke is Look, real quick. Brand. Right, right in the middle of the show, right now, top of the world, Bailey. Take us to top of the world right now. Top of the world, top five Cokes. That you've ever had or you want to have. Top five Cokes right out the gate. I'm not, even sure, I'm not even sure what a Coke is. Be. I don't need to Google it or nothing. I'll go right now. I got number one, number five. Let's start at number five. I'm going to go with Coke. <laughs> number four, number four, I'm going to go with Pepsi. I like Pepsi better than Coke. I don't know. I just got that, that feel, that sizzle. That's white people shit. Number three, I'm rolling with Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is going to be my number three. This is off the dome, Smitty. Look at my hands are free off the dome. Number two, I'm rocking with root beer. Ooh, you tripping. Okay, Hell no. Two, and number one, no doubt about it, it might make you – I've heard it does like I heard it it, it kills sperm. I heard it, it it gives you fucking Mountain Dew. It's probably white people shit, but Mountain Dew is just uh, it, that that syrup that they put in there that probably causes cancer and everything else is unbelievable. Keep causing it out there, people that make Mountain Dew. It's fucking unbelievable, and I can't drink it no more. I haven't had soda forever, um, but I do drink Squirt in Palomas. Oh, and that's a little little mixture, but 
Squirt, I used to love squirt and, and Southern Comfort. Oh, Southern Comfort and squirt. Now, if I, saying that, I almost dry heave now because I, I used to drink that when I was young, and I would throw up many nights getting so fucked up off Southern Comfort and squirt. Oh, but those are my five top soda, Smitty, right off the gate. No hands. That's what she said. Gawk, gawk. Give me your take. Whoa, what the? Pause. Like, what the fuck? What, what the hell was you just did right there? Huh? Bailey, what, you, show what, what did you what just do just now, JB? What was that noise Bailey, you just made? Did just, Bailey, show what I just did. We got a new sound effect that I want everybody to hear. Gawk, gawk, gawk. That's why it's called the gawk gawk. Because <laughs> you're gawking it in the back of that throat. Gawk, gawk, gawk. That's why it's called the gawk gawk. <laughs> Hey, the hell! I don't know who. I, 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 yeah, I like that new meme. What is that called? I like that new sound bite. I don't have it on my board, my soundboard. I'm gonna have to get it on my soundboard. What that was? Who that was? I'm act like I didn't hear that. I'm move on. Um, number she five sounded, for me. She sounded right. Let me just tell you, it sounded like perfection. It sounded like it came from here, didn't it? Like it came from. It sounded fucking, like perfection. I know it was, that. It's like it came from the whoever was doing that. Like. I, <laughs> Came from the soul, the spirit, like the fucking, like she got the, she got the, she got the D right know, here. When she, our, our sound bite maker, it'd probably be an understatement to say that they don't enjoy doing that. They like, they, they, they practice this shit on the right. Like they, they love this shit. It's like their sport. Like, this, like the way we prepare for the show, they prepare she, to, to she do She's not tripping. She's not tripping on losing TikTok. She don't give a hell about that. <laughs> Shit. If she had an OnlyFans. Hey, shit. TikTok ain't doing shit to that. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to my brother Edwin Hogan, man. Before I get my list, man. Shout out to Edwin Hogan. We love you too, brother, man. Sorry it takes a good brother to look out for you, man. He put the gawk gawk at the end. <laughs> he spelled it his way. <laughs> <laughs> he spelled it like, like a glock. Like a glock glock. <laughs> <laughs> Black people shit PPS. Number five, man. I got to go with Squirt. Squirt is underrated, man. Really good drink, man. Number four. Number four, I'm going to have to go with. I'm going to go with Shasta. Shasta, man. Very good. Which man. one? Shasta yeah. got a lot of. Just the whole brand. Shasta. Oh. Num number, <laughs> number three, I got to go with Fago. Fago is legendary. I'm gonna go with Grape Fago if I got to pick one. Grape Fago, fucking legendary. Wait, wait, what is it? What? What is it called? Fago. What the fuck is that? I never even heard of Fago. You ain't with Fago? No. If we got time, man, we are gonna pull a picture up, man. Fago. You know what? A it's, a, it's a mid. It's a Midwest thing. I'm sorry. It's a I Midwest thing. I never heard of it. Y'all, y'all got it out here in some select gas stations, but it's mostly a. Uh, it's a Midwest thing. Super duper good. Um, number two. I gotta go with Dr. Pepper. Growing up, I don't drink as much now, but growing up, man, like I said, love Dr. Pepper. And a good strong Dr. Pepper make you burp from the stomach. Like you like you need that feeling. Number one, come on, bro. It's, the, it's one of the most popular drinks of all time. It's undefeated. It's Sprite. Sprite is just like at the end of the day, everybody drinks Sprite. I, I've never met any person who said they don't drink Sprite. That's a fact. Like everybody drinks Sprite. I don't. Yes, you do. If me and you was out like making moves and we were doing like a, a, a autograph signing and we was in the car, had a long drive, and I and I went to the gas station and I got you a bag of Funyuns and a Sprite, you gonna fucking drink the Sprite? You know it's crazy. It's crazy because we're gonna go to the bottom of the barrel, and I'm gonna give you my bottom of the barrel nastiest soda, most overrated sodas, cokes, or whatever y'all call them. Let's start at number five. And Smitty, a lot of people don't want to agree with me on this. But Pineapple Crush is fucking garbage. Stop mm. making all these fucking flavored shit. 
pineapple crush is garbage. It tastes like a goddamn syrup fucking uh, extract. It's 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 very very overrated. All right. Number four for me is Sprite. Sure. Most overrated drink. It, it, I would almost put Sprite at one. It, it, it tastes like a bunch of fizzle in your mouth. There's no flavor. It, it's, it's like a lemon lime fucking fizzle. It's shitty. Sp- Sprite is trash. I don't understand how you get Bubba on here. It's trash. Number three, Fanta. The any Fanta, orange, the red Fanta gives me hood vibes. It's the most ghetto. It's like a ghetto hood inner city. You broke twenty five cent Fanta. That's the hood shit. That, uh, we grew up on it. We needed it, I guess. But it has always fucked me up. I never liked Fanta. It was shitty. Number two, man. If you don't know about this, Mister Pib. Now, Mr. Pib. Hold no, on. How do you like Dr. Pepper, but you don't like Mr. Pib? It's the same as Dr. Pepper, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. The, the people that came up with fake shit to emulate the original is garbage. Mr. Pib is a ran down, syrupy ass Dr. Pepper. It is way too bitter and strong. It is extra shitty. You can't simulate the original. Mr. Pib should have never been made. It's like a bulldog. French bulldog. Never should have been made. Number, where am I at? Number two? Am I at two? What you say? You said, um, you said any fan of Sprite and Mr. Pib. So, yeah, you're number two. No, I started off with Crush. I'm at one. You did Crush? So, you did Crush? You I did, did Crush, Any Fanas, Sprite, fan- no, Crush, Sprite, Any Fanas, Mr. Pib, and now you're number one. Number one. See, I don't think a lot of you don't know about this drink. I, I don't think any of you know about it. Um, a lot of you are going to disagree, and a lot of you probably like it and grew up on it. Cream soda. Do not make cream soda Cokes. It's fucking was tasting like it was like a sugar rush mixed with a cookie. <coughs> and I don't want to drink a cookie, Smitty. I don't want to drink a cookie. Cream soda. My mom used to drink them like a thousand a day. I thought they were fucking horrible. See, a lot of people don't even know what cream soda is. Hey, Bailey, if you can find a picture of a cream soda, please show it. But cream soda is the number one most overrated. Hey, uh, Jolt, by the way, low-key, Jolt was underrated. <laughs> Jolts were fire back in the day when I was growing up. Jolt, you drink like six Jolts. The grown-ups will tell you don't drink a Jolt. You'll die and all this. Jolts were fire. Smitty, I don't know if you could do it off the top of the crowd, off the top of the head. Like I, I never heard did. no Jolt. Um, but number five, man, you got to go with root beer. I like a root beer float, but I'm not drinking root beer by itself. Like, I very rarely, if ever, just went to the store and got a bag of chips and a root beer. You, I drink root beer with root beer floats. I don't just drink root beer. Root beer by itself is damn near... Root beer by itself is fire. Damn near not that good. I ain't gonna say nasty. Dinner ain't that good. So number five, gotta go to root beer. Number four, I gotta go with seven up. The way you describe Sprite is how you I describe Sprite? seven up. Seven up? Sprite is better than Seven Up, JB. Seven Contrary up is to better, belief, way better. Contrary to belief, Sprite's way better. Contrary than seven to up. belief, Seven Up will get you better when you're sick. It helps you when you're sick. It helps your stomach when you're you you sick. Bee Bee some about taste, some about flavor. If you got BG, no Seven Up helps you heal. Sprite don't. It's my list. Number number three, I gotta go with Mellow Yellow. It's a it's a fucking like it's a shitty squirt. It's now a it's shitty a squirt. It's a fake Mountain Dew. It's a shitty exactly. squirt. Is you may you hated on my fake Mr. Pib, but your fake Mountain Dew. Mr. Pib right? is really close to Dr. Oh, Pepper, though. It's really oh close. My God. Mr. Pib is really, really close. So I stop it. Stop it. Don't do that, JB. Number two. What should I do with number two, man? You know what? I actually agree with your um your pineapple taste. I don't like anything, any drink pineapple flavor, though. Like any like pineapple crush, pineapple fago, pineapple. Like in the hood, people drink that. I don't like pineapple at all. What the fuck is what that? Is this? Bailey, that ain't no goddamn cream soda. That's a fucking German ale. 
<laughs> number one, the most overrated though, pop of all time, and I'm gonna get hell from this by the white people, is Coca Cola. Coca Cola is the most overrated pop of all time, man. I again, every now and then you can get you one and it's good, but Coke is horrible. Like Coke takes rust off off fucking nails and tires and shit. It's video proof. That's not supposed to be in your stomach. <laughs> That's just a straight acid. It's not that good. It's decent, but in comparison to how big it is, it's extremely overrated. Extremely overrated. White folks smoke cigarettes and drink, and drink Coke when they get older. That's what they do. They, they do. put a cigarette I, and, and, and eat I, peanuts. And, and, and you know the cold part is? Motherfucker live till they're like 100. Yeah, and they eat peanuts. And they, be, they have a bad cough and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it looks like that. straight piss. The can is even better looking than the bottle, but that shit right there. Look at that smoke, Smitty. Look at that syrup in there. Like it looks like, like a bottle of piss. It look like apple juice mixed with syrup. Like, I, ooh, I don't, I don't know, man. That shit is bad business. Right hey, there. sugar on the rim, please. That's why it's overrated. Cause it is the number one selling soda. That's my point. It's overrated. It's oh, it's the most branded pop of all time it's it's the, it was the first it was like the original pop everybody says it's the best it's not the best it is the original and these commercials have did such a great job of branding it in a certain way that your subconscious mind tells you to go get a coke go get a coke white people y'all are addicted to coca-cola hey i hate any diet soda they're actually worse than the regular coke and diet coke's the worst um uh, y'all saw, call it diet soda it's worse and it's even worse for you. I can't drink diet. If someone gives me diet, like if I order diet, if I order Coke, like a Makers and Coke in, in, in a bar, I know right away if you gave me Diet Coke. And then they'll lie and say, oh, it's not diet. And I go, yeah, it is, because I know. And I'll throw it at your face. So I don't want any diet. I don't want to hear about diet. Diet is shitty. I don't want nothing to do with diet, Smitty. Um, Smitty, real quick, before we do some hell yeah, hell nah, some white people shit, some black people shit we haven't got to, because we've been talking, people talk about we don't talk sports. The whole fuck we've been talking about for two weeks since we came back. What are we talking about here? We talk about or, Coke or, and cereal, and then other than that, we talk a little AE, you know, a little I, bit. I, 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 I want to talk to Jabron. That's what I want to do. And we supposed, we supposed to go to a two-minute commercial break, talk to Jabron, but I guess he ain't here today again. I guess you lied to me again. Wouldn't be the first time you lied to me. You lied to me. No, no, he's, he is here. The motherfucker been asleep all morning. He is here. You know, woke his lazy ass up. The fans you been not begging for him. him. I ain't texted him. I shoot him a text. I, I mean, fuck. I mean, I gotta do everything. I gotta, I gotta get guests on the show. I gotta fucking. Hey, you know what? Them. Quiet is kept. I don't know if you can hold it down for about three minutes. I gotta take a piss anyway. TikTok, you stay on. I'll go wake his ass up and get him on if you want to take calls with him. That's kind of what I want to do. I want fans. Do y'all want to talk talk to uh, Jabron real quick? Let us know. Put your brown in the chat if you want your brown. Hurry up. You got 30 seconds. I need to see three your browns, and we'll go wake them up and make sure you're on the show. If y'all don't want them, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna wake them up. I see one your brown by Lucy. That's it's it. It's gonna happen. They want them. I'll be back. I'm gonna go. <sighs> Jada said, Yas. Hey, man, what's that noise, though? Because I'm trying to think. So we're, we just got them talking about sodas and pops and cokes, whatever you want to call it. Bentley, remind the new fans, what's the noise that people make when they're drinking a real good pop, a real good soda? Like, what's that sound when it when it's going down? Can you remind me it's that real quick? Gawking it in the back of that throat. Gawk, gawk, gawk. That's why it's called the gawk, gawk. That's when you know. That's when you know the, the, the pop is real good. When you're drinking it that way, that's when you know it just feels amazing when it's just going down that way. So... Shout out to whoever made that sound effect. I'm not for sure who it is, um, but shout out to you, man. Chat, what's going on, man? Talk to me real quick via text, via via the chat itself. I see JC said, where's your brown? JB's going to go wake him up real quick, and we're going to take calls, so be ready to take the number. JC, I think he's mixed. Let me see. Yeah, he's mixed. His nose a little has a little bit of roundness to it. He has that uh, I think he's slightly mixed. Like his dad is mixed, his mama white. Like he got a little bit of a little bit of brother in him right there. Who else we got in here, man? American hustle. This motherfucker's a scammer. He's lying to you right now. He's on your phone talking about a new idea. All he needs is ten thousand in upfront money to get the thing rolling, and he ain't gonna pay you back. This guy's a scammer right here. American hustle. Yeah, okay. I know your hustle. What's going on next, man? What's going on next? 
that Bart Sugar on the Rim plays. His picture kind of far back right here. This motherfucker is like a. He be, he think he a ladies man. Like he got a few girls, kinda. He he like a semi ladies man. But the ladies he got, they ain't really like they ain't bad. They cool, you know what I mean. So he 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 lives life a little bit on the high. He feels like he's a he's more of a pimp than he really is. You know what I'm saying? Smooth, kind of smooth cat. He wanted to be a kappa, but he he couldn't make it through the process. You know what I mean? Things like that. Be ready, go guys. We're about to have our guy Jabrown join the show here any second, any minute. And as a matter of fact, as I look down below, I think our main man has finally woke up, and he'll be here in a few minutes. Here, um, okay, I saw him pop up, and I think he just he left immediately, so he'll be here in a, in a, in a few seconds. Here, so be ready to take those calls because he's gonna take any question you have, sports related, questions about JB, questions about whoever it may be. He's going to jump in any minute now and uh, uh, join the show. What's going on, man? What's going on right here? Smitty, I thought only the Juggalo drink Fago. Fago's good. I don't know who you're talking about. Fago is not really a West Coast thing. It's a Midwest thing where I know, I know shit, growing up, Indiana, Detroit, Ohio, we love Fago. We've been drinking them for a long, 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 long time. So, um. Smitty, my username is a play on something you said months ago. I gained 7,000 followers with it. Well, you're fuck, You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, sugar on the rim. Give me some money. Like, you owe me You owe me a check. I got you 7,000 followers for something I said? I don't remember saying it. I say so much shit during the show. When the show is over, it's all a blank. It's all a blur. I black out. I don't even know what I said, when I said it, who I said it to. But if you got 7,000 followers, it's like you owe me. Send me a DM, man. With your route, with your route number and all your information. What's going on? We go. All right, y'all. I think it's time, man. The one and only, the man of the hour. It's time for Jabrown's hard truths. Jabrown, welcome to the show, man. Here we go. Clap it up for Jabrown, y'all, man. Jabrown, we've been looking for you all week long, man. You said what? All week. How you doing? Man, I'm hanging in there, man. I was knocked out. I, I got to go to work, man. You got you got a twelve hour shift. Yeah, I got I to gotta go pave the roads that a lot of you soft young cats won't do. We know we're talking to your brother. Our TikTok might go down. We, yeah. we uh, I think you're taking some live calls already. You got uh, you got some callers in the house. Go ahead, Smitty. You can That's talk. Like it, man. What's going on, man? It's Big Smitty and Jabron. Who we got? Big Smitty? Yeah, yeah. Who is this? Hey, Big Smitty. This is Tim from San Francisco. What's going on, Tim? You got a question for Jabron? Yeah, I got a question for Jabrown. Hey, as I understand it, Jabrown has made his point clear he's against Roman Kofi in the NFL. But I was curious what he thought about transgender coaching in the NFL. Well, we, we, you know, we're probably going to skip past down, but that's not Jabrown. With Big Smitty, go ahead. This is Jabrown talking. Hey, Jabrown, good to see you, man. This is Kyle from Portland, man. I got a question for you, man. Is there any hope for the bitch made city of Portland, Oregon? Say, say it again. Is there any hope for the bitch made city of Portland, Oregon? That's where I'm from. Oh, I got you. Uh, appreciate the call. I don't think so. You right there. You, you right there with Frisco, man. Frisco, Portland. There's a lot of cities fucking up. Chicago, New York's right on the edge of that shit. L.A. We got some bad shit. I, uh... Here we go. We got. Uh, I think you got San Antonio caller calling uh, Smitty. What's going on, man? Who we got, San Antonio? Yo, yo, yo. How's it going? It's going pretty good, man. You got any questions for Jabron? I do, man. It's regarding JB though. So he was talking about how he feels about the NILs and the transfer portals and all of that. Is there any situation, you know? And also, he has the. Coach JB show with yourself, Smitty. Is there any situation that you know he would consider to ever get back into coaching with the way things are today? Appreciate it. Hey, you're on the you're on the Coach JB show with Big Smitty. It's Jabron. What up? Hey, this one's from Big Smitty. Hey, so uh, hypothetically speaking, right? What would you do if a white bitch called you a jigaboo when you were sitting in front of the back, yo? If a white if a white chick called me a jigaboo while I was hitting it from the back, what would I do? That's a good question, man. Let me think on that. Wait, I didn't hear the question. 
He said, what would I do if a white girl, if I was hitting a white girl from the back, hypothetically, and she called me a jigaboo? Like, what would I do? God damn. Did that happen to that motherfucker? That's a very specific, like, thing, right? Like, he needs real advice. I, I was heard that word in a long time, either. That's what I'm saying. I forgot what it means. I would say, finish what you're doing. Go ahead and go ahead and get your nut, and then just don't talk to her no more. You're already in the midst of it now. You might as well finish. Now, hold up, though. I've heard like kinky stories where motherfuckers and these are from brothers telling like the white girl to call them those words, homie. Yeah. yeah. So don't be, don't be. Hold up. We got Missouri City, Texas in the building. Hey, there's Coach Leo. What's up, Coach uh, Jabron in uh, City? What up? What up? You got a question for Jabron? Hey, uh, yeah, I, I, I got to know. Uh, what do you think about Mexican Coke? That stuff's fire. With uh, you just got that uh, natural cane sugar. About what? Mexican Coke, brother. Oh, Mexican Coke. Okay, I'm going to talk about that. I know about it. Uh, Huntington Beach is in the building. You're on with Jabroni and Miss and Big Smitty. JB, what's going on? Big time fan of the show. Had JB's not here. It's Jabron and Smitty right now. JB had, had to go to the back. Oh, shit. My question was for JB. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call back. Bet. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? You're on the Coach JB show with Jabron and Big Smitty. Yo, has, is there a certain player that JB's coach that he considers his favorite? A what? Is there a player that JB has coached that he considers his favorite player? Good question. We'll ask him. Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, oh, Columbus, Ohio in the building. You're on it with Jim Brown and Big Smitty. Yo, 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 yo. Motherfucker. Jacking off online. What up, Mentone Cali in the house? You on the, call, on the phone with Big Smitty? Yo, what up, gentlemen? It's McCoy. I just had a political question. Okay. Nothing too spicy. Go. What do y'all think about these political pundits making uh, like political statements off of people that are dying, like uh, Lincoln Riley or even people who die in school shootings? Both parties do it. I think it's effed up. What do y'all think? Good Don't question. speak on the dead, man. Number one rule in the hood. Thank you. Georgia's in the building. Uh-oh. Uh, Jabron, what, what, what happened to that bounce that you used to do? The fan used to love that little bounce you used to do. You must be half asleep. You got Tennessee in the house. Yeah. You're on with Jabron and Big Smitty. Yo, Jabron, what up, dude? Well, uh, Big Smitty. Hey, you Jabron, know. you ever uh, fought your brother JB? And uh, who won? Because you always seem to be uh, getting it on for him. So, yeah, tell something. Uh, no doubt. Yeah, I used to whip his ass. Uh, hey, you New York is in the house. You on with your Brown and Big Smitty? What up? Yo, what's up, man? It's Jay from Brooklyn. Um, I just need some life advice from from your Brown, man. My shorty left me, man, and I don't know if I should just let her go or or should I fight for it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm lost right now. I just gotta let you know I, I cheated on her though. All right, all right. So, good question. Listen. First of all, adv life advice to you is this. You just said it in your yourself. She left you. What do you mean you are you going to let her go? Mm. She already left you, dog. You Now you saving them. Now you're trying to reel her back in, and now it's never going to be the same. Just remember that. There's too many fish in the sea. Even if you're in love or you think you're in love, you may just be in lust. And guess what? If she don't love you, dog, you can't force her to love you. Nah, I'm just keeping it real because it's never going to work. So you got to move on. That's fact. Uh, Kansas is in the building. What's up, Kansas? Is Yo. this Mahomes? Who is this? Nah. I'm a kid from Madden, Kansas. JB, what is the meal of the day? What are we eating for dinner tonight? Hey, kid, this is not JB. I'm going to say this again. This is Jabron. Ask Jabron. Say your question again and say start with Jabron. My bad, my bad. I'm going to answer that qu kid's question. What up, what up? You're on the coach. It's JB Show with Jabron and Big Smitty. Yo, Jabron, uh, do you like Creighton making the Final Four this year? I do. Jeff Nadu does too, I believe. Uh, we're going to have him on Friday and talk about Creighton in specific. But uh, I think they'll be in there because I think college basketball is watered down and shitty. Um, what up? You're on the coach JB Show with Big Smitty. Hey, Smitty, I got a question, man. We've all seen the famous video of you under the squat rack back when you was at Ball State. How much do you think you can squat today? 
Oh what? man, listen. I, I, one thing I'm not gonna do is lie on this show, and Don't I can only George probably squat George. like probably. What's up, Jabron and Big Smitty? Uh, watching the UGA Pro Day today. I got Marvin Harrison going number one, Brock Bowers number nine to the Bears. What y'all think about that? All right, all right, all right. Uh, let's get back to it. Hey, what up? What up? What up? You with the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty? This is Jabron. Yo, Jabron, what you think about them Tennessee Vols and Dalton Connect? Um, Tennessee Vols, uh, I'm not a fan because Coke Bottle's from there. She likes them. I've never really been a fan because my brother hated them. Um, what up? This is Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. This is Jabron speaking. What up? It's Justin from Indianapolis. Shout out to 317. Yes, sir. That town. What's going on, my guy? Jabron, are we going to smack JB upside the head when Sam Darnold finally shits the bed and he can just put all this shit to bed for, for the final? We'll ask, I'll ask him. I'll ask him. I'll, I'll let you do it if you can um, when, it, when it happens. But I, I like Sam Darnold, too. What up? You're on the Coach AB Show with Jabron and Big Smitty. Hey, what up, Big Smitty, Coach uh, Jabron, if you are a coach or whatever. But, hey, man, I'm from Alabama, man. So, hey, I've been wondering, man, what what, what happened to the T-Rich? Is he all right? Oh yeah, T. Rich is good. He's just, he's just he on the show during football season. We change up the guests. So E. Dub, Eric Weddle's on during football season. T. Rich is football season. Uh, Troy, New York is in the house. You're on the Coach JB show with Big Smitty. This is Jabron talking. New York. Jabron, you gotta tell your brother no more guck guck. Better. Love the call, man. This is real Coach JB show with Big Smitty. This is his brother Jabron. What up? We got I'm answer some of these questions real quick. So the squat, somebody asked me how much can I squat today? I would never want to come on the show and lie. I could probably only squat today like 585 pounds, probably. So not nowhere near my, my actual max. So that's about it. Thoughts on Mexican Coke, Jabron. Do you like Mexican Coke? Do you hate right, it? Well, let's break down Mexican Coke. My boy Cisco's not in here. He can break it down uh in totality. Ruben, I don't know if you're in here. Mexican Coke is made with real sugar. A lot of people. So Coke had a little trend where they came out with the real original Coke that I drank growing up, which was in the bottle. It was real Coke. If you haven't had it, go taste it. A lot of people don't like it. So I, I'm not a fan because it's actual natural sugar. And I guess natural sugar is a little different taste. So it is a little different. But if you haven't had one, go get a Mexican Coke. Try it out. You can find them somewhere. Okay, I got another question that you didn't answer. You skipped through. Um, is there a player that your brother, JB, has coached that he considers his favorite player? If so, who is that player? He's always told me it's in the chat. Alan Edward, he's in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you kind of already gave the advice, but did you have any more for the guy who cheated on his girl, who uh, she left him, but he thinks he can keep her? Any more advice? Did you give him everything you wanted to give him? Um. Yeah, I mean, she's she she's leaving. What are you gonna do? Smitty, He's saying you like he can fight for her, like keep trying, like get her to oh, like so forgive like, him. If you're married, I get it. If you're married, you gotta. But like, it's even then, at some point, you're gonna chase your wife down and beg her and beg her and beg her, and she's kind of like, uh, like w at that point, she's gone. She's cut off. Her brain is uh telling you otherwise. So, I think you're you gotta cut your losses, dog. I like that. A little kid asked you, I think, your favorite meal, I think. He asked, he said JB at first, and I corrected him. And he got a little nervous, but I think I, you, that's life, young man. You got to say the right thing. You get one opportunity, you got to get it right. So I wasn't being mean to you, young man. Just trying to educate you. But he said, what's your favorite meal, if I'm not mistaken? Favorite meal, yeah. Uh, man, I don't now, what know. Do you like, what do you like to eat, and what do you like the people to eat off you? I mean, or, or, or eat for you, eat in front of you. Yeah, uh, eat for me, A.E., hey, Eat, but I like my favorite meal. Um, I do a steam crab pot. I do crab, red, uh, red potatoes, corn on the cob, shrimp, uh, mussels, um, sausage, and I throw all that in with some with some crab boil, Cajun seasoning. Rub it up, rub it down. Pause. Whatever you fucking say. Um, and I do a crab boil. I do it every so often that I like a lot. Got you, man. Got you. Okay. 
Two more questions. I see my teammate, uh, my boy Quake is calling me right now from Ball State. I got to hit him back. Two more questions here, man. So somebody asked, or somebody predicted that Marvin Harrison Jr. would go number one in the draft. What do you think about that? Is that crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. And last but not least, someone said, uh, can you or can they slap your brother, JB, once Sam Darnold shits the bed? What say you? Yeah, that's cap. You want to let nobody slap your brother? He's not going to. JB beat the shit out of that guy. And uh, Sam Darnold, I, I'm with my brother. I think Sam Darnold's going to uh, gonna do better. At Tina, Coach JB can cook. Um and I'm sure he'll invite you over anytime you want to come try it. So why is that? I'll, I'll ask him. Do you know something about JB and Latina that the show don't know about yet? Latina. Hey. Well, hey, man, Jabron, man, we appreciate you for joining, man. I think uh, it's already nine o'clock, man. JB probably has other shit to do. I say we just end the show with, with you and I. And, uh, do you have like, I guess, a word of wisdom that you want to end the show with and kind of tell the people before you go? We probably won't see you again until I'm assuming next week. I know you got a busy ass schedule. Is there something you want to kind of tell the people to kind of end the show with, Jabron? The people love you. They absolutely love. If you love Jabron, put Jabron in the chat right now with a cap, with a capital, all caps, Jabron. I want you to scream it in the chat. Pause. Um, Latina, I'll let them know. Um, Man, she's going to fly over here for a month and stay with JB. I know what y'all going to be doing. All right, continue. Um, word, word of wisdom. Advice, word of advice. I don't have a word of advice. Just strap on your hard hat, put on your work boots. We grew up that way. Coach JB the same way. Strap on your hard hat, put on your work boots, and, uh, you know, go out there every day and grind. Teach somebody something. Teach somebody something because when TikTok folds, you're going to have to save the youth. And they're not going to know anything. They don't have any skills, no job skills, no trades. They don't have no uh, trade skills. So you're going to have to grab a kid, grab him, bring him in. He's going to fight it, to line him up, put him in shape, show him you love on him. But at the same time, coach him hard, love him harder, like my brother always say. So appreciate you guys. TikTok, we may never see you again. Shout out to you guys. You got to have to get some real jobs here soon. Uh, when the government shuts you down. Um, and Smitty, take it away. Appreciate y'all, man. It's been another great, amazing show. Hump day, middle of the week. Tomorrow, Steve King going to come back on. We're going to bring some boxing into the show as well. And uh, we might even have some other special guests. I'm going to reach out to a couple of my guys. I've been, you know, really carrying the show on my back. We saw JB left for the entirety of the damn show. Uh, I don't know if he's coming back to end the show or what, but... Regardless, man, we had your Brown on here, and we just appreciate all of our loyal fans, you know, for tuning in, for calling in, whether that's from YouTube, whether that's from Twitter, whether that's from, you know, TikTok, wherever you may listen from. Oh, JB is back. And uh, JB, I'll just close out the show, man. Your brother did a hell of a job defending you and just giving us knowledge. And, um, yeah, man, we just appreciate y'all. We love y'all, man. Continue to follow us on all platforms, man. The JB, Coach JB Show uh, on Twitter. Uh, Instagram, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram been booming lately. I appreciate y'all. Darnell underscore Smith 95. Send me DMs. I respond when I can. Become a member so you can join the Discord. We get real spicy in there. We drop exclusive information. Shout out to Joe Accord for just dropping all the knowledge he got. Shout out to all the queens in the chat. You know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Doing your thing. Without y'all, wouldn't be no us. Hey, and everybody hey, else, man. You off for a few minutes. Let me. Can we go through a couple DMs? You got a, if you got a few real quick, I got I got a few minutes. Yo, Coach JB, I'm a basketball player at my high school. I want to know how I tell the difference if the coach is trying to degrade me and constantly being, or is he trying to make me better the whole season? I felt like I've had to prove myself, but I don't know the type of player I am. I'm the hardest worker in the gym. I come first in every sprint. I killed starters in practice and didn't get an opportunity once. Just wanted to see your advice since your coaching style is very hardcore, but it's to make the player to push them to their potential. So the kid's illiterate. He can't speak. But at the same time, though, he asked him the question. We'll dive through it. The problem is with these young cats. Um, they ask these questions all the time to me. 
I don't believe they understand what hard work really is. They are telling you he's the hardest worker. I would go on the, the roster. This is 99% of the time. I'd go on that roster and ask that team, who's your hardest worker? And none of them would say this kid. See, that's the thing. These kids think they're telling you they're the hardest worker. They're not. I would find it hard-pressed for any coach at a shitty high school somewhere in Podunk, America, to not play the hardest worker. Because the hardest worker is going to get you some extra wins, extra possessions, extra stops. He's going to get you extra shit. I'd find it hard-pressed for you to tell me you're the best player and the hardest worker, but yet you're not playing, and the coach yells at you. I think you're lying, and I think you're full of shit, and I think you want somebody to feel sorry for you. See, that's what I come to find out throughout my years. So if the kid really is, maybe he's just not very good. There's a part of that that's true, too. Yeah. There's great kids all day long. I tell my kids all the time, hey, man, you're great. I appreciate you, but you're never going to play here. You're just not good. <laughs> I, it, 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 it's a true fact of the matter in this business. We understand, We love it. And the parents, that's the problem with America. The, 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 the parents will come in, and my kid's there every day, and I, I, do, I do fundraising for you, and I, I appreciate it, ma'am. But that's why I tell him beforehand, your son may not play. He's not very good. He's a great kid. You've raised a great parent, but he's not very good. And at the end of the day, even though you're a great kid, you may not be a good player and you will not play for me still. So I just, that's just where it is. Sorry. Uh, that's, real, that's, that's, real. that's the truth. That's just the truth. Uh, the hard truth, man. Like Jabron said, a hard truth. Real quick, far from normal TV, are the Cowboys burning it down? No, they're not burning it down. I just think that they're just being conscientious on what moves they want to make. They, they have an amazing team already there. Jerry Jones spends big money all the time and they still continue to lose. So I think he's trying to just take his time before they make a, a, a poor decision. So thanks for your question. All right, user 729-315-9719597. Okay. He has, he has zero followers. It's from Star Wars, R2-D2. You are fucking annoying. Hope you never coach anyone again or ever around any young men. You a clown. Well, I guess that's not a question, so I, I got to move on. That's just, that's just a statement, I guess, he made towards me. JB's DMs. We appreciate you, though, bro, for keeping it real. Um. I, the month, the one I, I mean, I, there's literally twenty six thousand DMs on my TikTok that I've never even knew about. Please don't read all of them, please. Golly. Hey, coach, I know you probably will never see this, but I'm going to be a freshman in high school next year. I started playing football in seventh grade, and I didn't get to see the field a lot then. And I played this year, but I miss a lot of practice due to vacation. TJ and Allen, before I read the rest of this long-ass DM, please tell everybody how I felt about your vacations. Please tell everybody. Polynesians have reunions and shit all the time. They have reunions. They have luau's. They have funerals. They have all kinds of shit. TJ would come to me about a million different things that Polly's got to do and ask TJ, did he ever miss? TJ, you better figure that shit out. TJ, you better fucking figure it out. We got to figure this shit out. We got to work it out. Now, I'll work some shit around some certain things that happen. You can't, you can't avoid or move around certain things. But this motherfucker said I missed a lot because of vacation. Now I think it could be a troll. Let me let me let me advance. Yeah, what's the actual question though? Yeah, like what's it? I'm around 5'7", 130 right now, and I'm really stuck on if I should play football next year. I don't have a lot of experience since I haven't seen the field a lot. Both of my brothers played high school ball, and they think I should play. But the thing is that I could instead of playing football, I could do basketball in the fall and play and play football, basketball, track, and baseball. So I was wondering if you had any advice on if I should play or not. I played wide receiver and corner a little bit. Love last chance you. Have a great night. You remember what I said you were expose. He told you his whole life. He said my social security number is 519-245757. My, you know, brother, he, the my brother said he's 57130. Son, you're never going to play basketball. Let's stop. Number two. You're not going to play football either, and you you just don't have it, and you should just stay on vacation. See, that's the problem. They don't want me to tell the truth. You should just stay on vacation. Uh, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start breaking down film again. I in the sky don't lie, and I'm going to start doing that segment again. I'm going to start breaking down film from players that send me their film because I got a million requests for me to break their film down. 
and a lot of quarterbacks. So I'm going to do that, Sean Salisbury and I. A lot of people liked it. We're going to get back to doing that. So appreciate it. We got a lot to discuss tomorrow, Smitty. It's it's uh, Tee It Up Thursday. Uh, we got a lot to, to get into um, that we didn't talk about today as well. So we'll get into that. Um, but it's been a great show. Appreciate everybody c- coming on in. Jabron made an appearance. He'll be back on Friday if you need him to. Oh. Um, but let's see what it is. We got a lot to break down. And uh, Tee It Up Thursday tomorrow. I got my... Four aces hat ready to rock. Hey, Pat played well in Hong Kong. PP, shout out, shout out, shout out PP. Shout out uh, appreciate you, Mo Kong. Martin. Good to see you. Uh, as always, appreciate everybody there. Appreciate everybody in the chat. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Pound that like. Bailey, take us away. Issues get pressed so passage, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the ass a rap.